Welcome to Breeder Syndicate 2.0, where we explore the history of a clandestine scene, researching everything from cannabis strain history, old smuggling tales from the first person perspective, to breeding science and news on current subculture. I'm your host, Matthew, and I'll occasionally be joined by my homie Nazo Dog, breeder and grower from Mendocino, to speak on these subjects and sometimes interview other participants. Our goal is to document this history before it's written by corporations and others who just weren't there. Let's start writing some wrongs. Welcome to the underground. All right. Welcome to Breeder Syndicate. I'm here with my buddy High and Lonesome and Santa Cruz Goat Farm Pack and of course Not So Dog. We're going to talk about some of our um, upcoming 420 stuff we got going on for the for the site and we're going to talk about some of their history and like some of their likes, wants, needs desires in in cannabis uh these guys have been at it a long time and have a lot to offer and a lot to say so i, I this has been a, a long chase for both of them so it's kind of cool we get to get them both at once at the same mm -hmm. time and, and i think we're going to go over some of the party too like what we saw at the party what we liked, didn't from what we saw at the party etc yep and they both have handy avatars they do they do <laughs> elusive you know. creep and come handy. prepared you know handy <laughs> avatars <laughs> yep all right, so let's start off. Hi, Alonso. Let's talk about some of your new lines that you have coming out. We have, of course, have your uh, Appalachia, which is pretty well known for, for many reasons. Can you talk about it a little bit? Yeah, uh, so that's a F3 I did. I uh, went back and I had actually worked the line to F5, and I wasn't really happy with, um, with what I had selected. So I went back to the F2s. I popped 50 of them. I um, selected two males and three females, and uh kind of let them go at it i wanted more of the green crack side coming through on the turf yeah. um you know one thing you hear a lot about appalachia is about like the creamy milky stuff coming through in crosses yeah mm -hmm. i kind of i'm i'm more a fan of the tropical side of the of the green crack same um that creaminess kind of came through the trace dog mail that I used. Mm -hmm. uh, all of those that I popped, um, they were very potent, like the uh, on yeah. the females, but they didn't have the rankness that y you would expect with a Kim D. Yeah. Um, and how did that cross to the Appalachia? Like, did it, it, none of the rankness really crossed over in the in the outcrosses? Did you see it in different generations? Any of it? Um, I. Not not a ton, no. It was more of like a sweet cream. Um, you know, you see it in Star Dogs. Um, yeah, I see definitely. it in uh, Kim 4, too. It's kind of like a little bit sweeter, not as nasty, not as like disgusting garbage as Kim did. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so so that that's kind of what I did. I wanted to go back to the F3, kind of narrow it down instead of keeping it wide open, narrow it down to what I wanted out of it and what I liked. And, um, what yeah. did you like about the green crack that made you want to choose that as a mom? Or was it just like one of the moms that you happened to have in the room when you were doing the run? Like what, what was uh, specifically going on in your mind? Well, originally when I did it, um, I was doing quite a bit of outdoor, uh, on the East coast, uh, probably middle two thousands. Okay. And uh, green crack performed extremely well outside. It was, um, mm. you know, yeah. except it needed needed some staking, which you know, when you're gorilla growing, you can't do. You can't yeah. trail it. You can't. You know, it's yeah. it's kind of a pain in the ass. So I wanted to put, um, I wanted to put it on a little bit more robust frame. Um, I'd had Kim D for a little bit at that point, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, I was smoking it a lot, and that's what I wanted to smoke. Yeah, um, but the plants were also extremely robust, so I crossed it to green crack, uh, purple urkel, Kim four, Kim D, the uh, an Acapulco gold cut that I had at the time, and uh, abusive uh, OG Kush. Oh no shit! Yeah, uh, how's that Acapulco it, gold cross, dude? Yeah. Uh, I never grew that one. I gave them all out to friends, and I never really heard anything back about that. The uh, the only two that have any kind of lasting value are the, of course, the green crack cross and the purple Oracle cross. Yeah. There, and there, you said there was a chem four trade dog too, right? Yes. Yeah. Yep. I did that as well. 
And, you know, um, what I found in it was very similar to Star Dog. There was some really nice chem type plants in there and, you know, some stuff that wasn't, wasn't as rank, you know, some, yeah. some of that creamy sweetness coming through, but still, you know, extremely good quality smoking plants. Do you think you got what you wanted out initially out of the, the trace dog? Um, I, I kind of wish I had gone back through some F2s. I made a few F2s, but mm -hmm. I never really pursued it. And, um, you know, at this point, the seeds are no longer viable, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's, it's it's cool line. There's, um, you know, I feel like if you F2 that you'd open up a lot of stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, Trace Dog and Chem 4 is kind of like your own version of Star Dog. Uh, way, yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 I mean, isn't I'm, Trace Dog, isn't, I mean, it's, it, it'd be a different male or, yeah, you know, yeah. it'd be, it'd be a different yeah. selection from the line. Yeah. Yeah. It was, um, I just made a kind of personal amount of them to go through. It was like a, I always like to keep like a doomsday stash of seeds just yeah. so like, you know, yes, if sir. I lose all my friends and all my cuts and just like, you know, I'm, you know, uh, just a nobody floating around out there. I can have something to go back to, to look through. Even, even plants that I don't like, I'll, I usually will pollinate them before I drop them. Yeah. Cause you just never know, like something down the line might trigger that sense member. And you're like, I really wish I had that. Even though at the time it doesn't even seem viable or feasible for sure. Yep. Yep. And sure. just, you know, it's fun to waste all that space. Yeah. <laughs> right. And energy and time. <laughs> Time, money. Hey, man, One thing I thought about before yeah. before we get too far away from it is just a point I might make, which is that uh, it's really cool if you're doing a multi-stage breeding thing to save seeds from every stage of it, right? So that mm -hmm. way, if you feel like you screw up, which is often, you can go back and be like, oh, I'd want to redo it. So he was just talking about, I took it to F5 and I didn't really like some of the direction that it went. So I, then I went back all the way a few generations and started taking it a different direction. You know, I hear about that. Like people say they do that all the time, but there is very rarely any proof of anyone ever doing that. Where like, you've seen it, you've seen the seeds, they were out. It, there's been X amount of years between it and you know that that's possible. And I actually have the F5s of Appalachia here from him so i know he took it to f5 and went back and it, I, I think that's that's pretty commendable because you just don't see it very often yeah. you know i also think like too like the the era that that high and lonesome is talking about it was i think it was more common for people to like play around and work their own little lines a bit yeah. it was way before there was like a bunch of like american seed sales or anything like that happening so now it's kind of like a, you make seeds and it's a one-off and they exist until they don't exist anymore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but then I think it was a little bit more common, you know, at least amongst like weed nerds to like, you know, you make something and then it kind of becomes the base of what you're doing and you cross it to this and you cross it to that. And, then, you know, it, 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 and a lot of it, like he was saying, it's all about like, I'm breeding for personal smoke. Yeah. Oh, which, yeah. That's which what gives it. you it gives you a lot more freedom than if you're breeding for the market because you're just okay. breeding for things that you like. No, it, it all started, you know, the whole, even just growing, it started by trying to make sure I had the best quality weed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's the best way to breed. You yeah. Know? I mean, I mean, it's, then, it's, 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 you're not being true to yourself if you're not, because how are you going to enjoy the smoke and like, go through tons of different, you know, examples yeah. and not enjoy it and, and pick a keeper that you don't enjoy. That's really hard to do. Yeah. Like you want to be stoked on what you're doing. Right. For sure. yeah, yeah. You can lose a lot of, a lot of uh, passion for something real fast by, by cheapening it that way, in my opinion. I mean, there's some people out there that like all their phenos and stuff that they, they get found, get found by other people because those breeders don't crack them themselves. Oh yeah. They yeah. make them, name them, package them, sell them. And then they find out through others, whether or not anything good happened. Oh yeah. You know, I would say that's kind of become the standard these days a little bit, but in the era that high and lonesome is talking about, which is, you know, 15 plus years ago or whatever, I don't think that was the standard then. Hmm. Um, no. you, could get, you could get rid of anything back then. Oh yeah. 
And before we stray too far, I do want to ask, because I know this is going to be the number one question people want to know. When did you meet B, Bodhi, and when did he acquire the Appalachia from you to work? Um, so he and I had been, you know, chatting and exchanging seeds on, uh, I think it might have originally been IC Mag, um, okay. but probably 06 ish. Um, you know, he'd send me a few things he made. I'd send him a few things I made. And I, uh, when I did the uh, Trace Dog Crosses, I believe I sent all of them to him um, just for him to check out. And um, I didn't even know he'd popped any until he uh, hit me up asking if it was okay if he released some seeds that he had made with the Appalachia. Um, I think, you know, I, I'm not sure it was something that he meant to do, but that's just kind of how it worked out. Um, and he made some really cool stuff. And I mean, people are still popping it. People are still passing out cuts from those seeds. That's, um, it was definitely a very comprehensive job he did of crossing it to everything relevant at that time. I know it's a very common sentiment that, um, a lot of people feel that some of their favorite stuff came from that you know, like the, the Appalachia crosses. And one of my favorite moments ever in life was being able to, to watch you and Bodie meet in person for the first time and then <laughs> ride away in the sunset. That's <laughs> true. How sweet is that, yeah. dude? Together? <laughs> yeah, he's a hell of a nice guy. Yeah, that was he's that's one cool. Of people that's, you know, you meet him in person and he's actually genuine. You know, yeah. it's it's a rare thing, but he's as nice as he comes off and just a hell of a cool guy. Yeah. You know, it, you know, we were all holding hands, staring out the window as you guys drove off. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad it wasn't into the sunset, you know. <laughs> <laughs> right? It was just almost a little bit past sunrise. <laughs> I think everybody had a glow going on, though. Yeah. I yeah. I had, a, I had a nice uh, pregnant glow the next morning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yes, indeed. <laughs> so, Pat. Right. Let's talk about some of your stuff, dude. Like, uh, yeah, man. you kind of popped out of the woodworks with uh, uh, some old cuts. You have an old Afghan cut that you work with. Mm -hmm. um, you, you work with a lot of train wreck stuff. Uh, one of your big releases, your first big drop, was a uh, train wreck reversal, mm -hmm. and you hit a few things. Uh, do you want to talk about some of that? Sure, man. You know, uh, where where do I begin? You know, I've uh, always kind of had interest in genetics, you know, just growing over the years and what have you. But um, initially when I got into the game, it was all clones for me, you know, and, and my crew. And so, you know, you'd come across the occasional seed pack or somebody, you know, like we'd shoot up to, uh, where is it, up to BC and grab things once in a while. Um, not beasters, but, you know, whatever yeah. seeds I had hidden, hidden in the corners up there in gas lamp area. Um, so, you know, as much as, as seeds were available and like not so was told the stories, you know, a lot of that was going on down down south from where I was at that point. I was where I'm thinking is when I was living up in Humboldt, uh, up in the northern part of the county. Um, you know, seeds were, were prolific down there, right? There's a reason generations of people, you know, breeding and whatnot, but clones were just so accessible back in the day that there wasn't really a need to go hunting and yeah. you know, try to find whatever. Um, so it always kind of been on my radar, but it never been necessarily something I turned towards. And then, uh, you know, um, being in the game long enough, you come across certain cuts that you just fall in love with, even if they fall out of style and what have you. And, you know, um, I caught on pretty quick in the 2000s, you know, to the kind of turnover of things. You know, you'd see something just be prolific and then it would disappear and you wouldn't see it again. And so I determined that I would have to, you know, hold on to some of these things um, yeah. and see where that goes. And so just, you know, years pass and all of a sudden you become this keeper of whatever the hell you thought was good from way back when. And um, so that's kind of in terms of just what my, uh, you know, the way my path was laid out with the whole garden yeah. scene. So, so, you know, fast forward to now, um, you know, I've always been on the, on the DL for the most part with what I do, and I didn't really have a big intention of riding the wave into the, the legal market and try to go too heavy there. Um, I like but, your choice of words know, there. Riding that? the wave? Yeah, riding <laughs> the wave, right? I didn't feel like, yeah, I was not, I did not have my board out. I wasn't yeah, ready exactly. to go, go that way. Um, and, uh, and so I decided, well, you know, hey, man, this is part of my life, right? I'm not going to just move on. It's growing as, as my therapy. And so... 
Um, but I also am kind of bored here and I don't feel like living by the algorithm of the garden, so yeah. to speak, like I had for so many years and I needed some kind of pivot. Right. So um, just like anything, you know, considered doing that for years, but played around. But then, uh, you know, um, come the time that I, I'm starting to get real bored and not wanting to, to move forward, growing weight anymore, I thought, you know, this is that right time to have fun. Right. And get into the genetic side of things. Um, yeah. And so what do I do? You know, I just kind of took what I had in my uh, armory and started messing around. And here we are. How'd you find the crew in the first place? It's a good question. Um, this crew right here, this crew, yeah, I came across, crew. I came across you guys, you know, unlike some of, some of the other cats in this, in this field, like I stayed true to, to trying to stay under the radar. So I never got yeah. onto the form, forums back in the day. And I mean, not so knows we, you know, you'd send people to go buy your supplies at the store and, and not have your license plate get a, oh yeah, you know, tagged or whatever. So I've just kind of always abided by that code and never got onto the forums. And then um, IG comes around. I would say maybe 2017, 16, 17, 18, something like that. And started uh, thinking about reversals. I'm like, hey man, I got this this T dub cut, and you know, I want to see, I want to open her up and see what happens. And uh, mm -hmm. so started paying attention and as. Matter of fact, I got in touch with Brian over there at Radio Ridge. Oh, okay. Yeah. And asked him, hey, man, what's the deal? You know, who, who's who's the go-to here? And um, he put your name on, so you get a hold of Matt, and here's Matt's number, see what's up, talk to him. And uh, you must not have so, liked your ass. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's like, fuck this guy. I'm going to send him yeah. Matt. Um, this <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this dude's a kook. Here we go, Matt. Um, so, so anyway, yeah, long story short, that's how I got in. And then, uh, you know, he vouched for me in terms of being uh, somebody relatively solid in, in the field or whatever. You know what, it, for me, it, what it was? Which was, I appreciate, by the way. Yeah, you had, you said you had Blue Dream, right? And for, uh -huh. ever since I've lost that cut, I have had people telling me, hey, I got, I got that cut. Don't worry, I got it. And mm -hmm. not once has anyone ever been able to show me butt of it. I've seen pictures of stuff that look just like it. But when yeah. I would get it, it would smell like fucking flow or something like that. You know, it just it was off. Right. It would right. look just like it. And then he brought it down. And I was like, holy shit. Not only does he have real blue dream, he has train wreck too. These are little time oh. capsules. And, they were, <laughs> and not <laughs> only that, it wasn't just that. It was how well they were grown, how well they were cured. All no, of man. it. It was it hit all the points. And I was like, God, this guy cares about his fucking weed a lot. Mm. You know, and he cares about <laughs> good weed. And that's kind of where that's, I I, yeah. I realized like this this is legit. I want to see where this dude's what the what this dude's story is. And and without going into detail, too mm -hmm. much detail. Um, obviously you come from like the surf background, right? Yeah, you could say that. I mean, Central Coast, coastal life, yeah, for sure. I mean, I'm not I'm not a big I'm not a big surfer. I I was a skater, snowboarder, kind of. But that was a part of your you know. culture, who you hung out, the kind yeah. of group oh, hanging yeah. out with, why you would have had access to these certain clones in the first place. And yeah, it's definitely tied in. It's tied into the whole lifestyle of just, you know, growing up in the in the 90s over here in the Central Coast. Like you were getting away from it. If you couldn't find weed, you found a surfer. But yeah, you know, I was I was selling the weed to the surfers. So, you know, exactly. <laughs> and, and surfers usually had a pretty good choice of weed back then. Like uh, a lot of them would travel around the world, get some of the best weed on Earth. So to have it having the kind of clientele you did without being specific, mm. it um, I learned you know that you had to perform better than others to have the kind of clientele you did at the time which well, i took notice of and why why i realized you you had gotten so good at curing and drying and all that other stuff because they were they were pretty high-end clientele well and they're pretty picky man you know i mean yeah. they're, they're, their dads were growers and they grew up in the whole scene and they're around the world yeah so exactly absolutely. you can't you can't bring swag to those dudes and be like yeah i want a good price for this that's just not gonna happen <laughs> No, one, thing I, they call. one thing maybe I should interject is like since High and Lonesome was talking about Green Crack and now we're talking with Pack about Blue Dream and Trainwreck is that there's some of these things that like they became famous long enough ago and then kind of fell out of favor long enough ago that people probably mostly only hear legends about them yeah. to some degree. And a lot of people like Matt was saying, get fakes or, you know, or get it poorly grown for whatever reason. Yeah. Seed versions and where they use the name. I said one of the things that sucks yep. about that is that often people talk about why they got burned out on a certain cut 
not why that cut had lasting fans to begin with. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, and I think with both, with the three things I just named with, you know, green crack or with, uh, you know, train wreck or blue dream, all three of those, you know, uh, there's a reason there's, there's a bunch of reasons why they got popular and people really enjoyed them. Yeah. And then yeah. they, um, you know, they ended up getting burned out, you know, because people were growing huge amounts of it. And once huge amounts of it start growing, a lot of people Quality start doing it poorly, Yeah, yeah. you know, and, and then all of a sudden it gets a bad reputation and then something moves on and people lose track of the quality. And like you were saying, like maybe only a few people end up holding onto it uh -huh. and then people are surprised at how good this thing they've heard of, but maybe in derogatory terms. Oh Yeah. <laughs> You know, and I don't mean, you know, I just like there was a lot yeah. for me, like when when High and Lonesome was talking, I was thinking about how, you know, like basically once people in like Grass Valley and certain other regions got green crack and started growing seven to ten pound outdoor plants, mm -hmm. that yeah. kind of like midsy green crack is what blew got turned people away from it. But it became grow, accessible. Yeah. But, you know, green crack is, you know, in extracts and something like that, it actually has a bunch of really nice terps. It has a bunch of really nice structure to it. It has a very, like, cool flavor done well, you know? Oh, yeah, indoor 70-day green crack is tough to beat, man. It's, it's yeah. really good. Like, yeah, I'm like looking people, so forward to it. <laughs> right, and he just said, what I, the other thing that happens to people is they grow it too big, and then they end up taking it 10 or 12 days early because it's, it's done enough to pass. Yeah. Oh yeah. Makes and all the difference so, too. So then the market gets flooded with a bunch of, you know, I mean, it definitely happened with green crack. It definitely both happened with blue dream and train wreck. All three yeah. sort of suffered the same fate in that they could be enough of a production plant that they got overproduced and people thought the production version was the version. When in well, reality, so then it little, was. I yeah, think blue dream took a bigger hit. I think Blue Dream took a much bigger hit than just that. Um, Green Crack didn't because I, I knew who was who was releasing seeds of it and who wasn't, and there weren't a lot of seeds released to Green Crack. There weren't like Green Crack seeds mm. out there you could buy in mass, you know. But Blue mm. Dream, the second that thing kicked off, you had Emerald Triangle seeds, which was a, I believe made in Spain. Um, there was a, a you had Humboldt seeds. You had all these different companies releasing their versions of what Blue Dream was which was whatever bulk Spanish company was pushing out as their blueberry haze. I mean, and that's what cuts got passed around as blue dream. I'm 99%. I'm saying Vince. Train wreck. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm Same convinced H and L that like in the, in the dab era, uh, green crack has been named, renamed papaya. Oh yeah. Um, a lot of, a lot of those like yeah. tropical terps and stuff like Mango. that. Like they would yeah. never call it a green crack extract. No, yeah, right, but they'd have well, some high end right? green crack rosin, and they'd be like, Ooh, this is the papaya, yeah, you know? <laughs> live rosin of papaya. This is the papaya, oh, you know, this is some oh, tropical God. fruity. This is special, and not to say you that know? Natso has any knowledge that the papaya strain out there from the specific company is green crack. He's saying that's a probably what happens. Oh, right? well, even, you know, even well, 15 years ago when people didn't want to buy green crack around here it went as mango it went as papaya yeah. it went mango you know yeah. yeah yeah it just you know that happens yeah there's half a dozen names for blue dream oh yeah that got made mm -hmm. and maybe even more that got made because people got blown out on it and they're like oh this isn't that this is blue dragon yeah this is, this is you know <laughs> it reminds me of your barry white story <laughs> yeah yeah you know. I mean, it, it's true. And, uh, and, but you know, the point that I'll, I'll scroll back on is that if you take somebody who knows the strain, like say pack or high and lonesome, and they grow a nice two, three, four, six ounce plant, either in a greenhouse or in an indoor environment, people are going to be blown away by how good it is. Oh yeah. Pack people blue have dream blew the party away. I think people have forgotten Absolutely. why those things got so popular in the first yeah. place and they only think they got popular because you could get an eight pound outdoor plant that was bigger yeah, yeah. yeah. and that's not what got them popular in the beginning at all it's just not yeah, yeah it's, it was a grow in somebody's closet that knocked yeah, everything exactly. out yep 
I mean, a, a three ounce, a, a three ounce green crack plant is delicious. Yeah, <laughs> it, it really is. You know, I think a four and, ounce blue dream is a damn delicious, especially how, how long did you take it packed this last time? Uh, for the party, I pulled it early, actually. Yeah, uh, I know. It's weird. Yeah, it I pulled like, it. Uh, I think I pulled it at 60, 60, 61 days, maybe. And it was super berry for me. Yeah, it was nice. That was right the best that, I've ever had, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. That was killer. Uh, that actually, happens when you grow a cut for, you know, 15 yeah. fucking <laughs> you, <have to laughs> you better You better put out some work, some good work after, yeah. you know, 20 years. I mean, now, really, you know? what? One of the things I, you know, I remember talking to CSI about this probably, I don't know, eight years ago or something where in his mind, going back to what Pac was saying about where he was up in Humboldt and stuff, mm -hmm. uh, Trainwreck was one of the first named clones yeah, yeah, that yeah. really spread around the growing community deeply in that mm -hmm. zone. Like there was lots of seeds and there was lots of name stuff that got like here and there, it popped up. But like train wreck really kind of had its moment. Yeah. Hey man, that was the first strain that you started seeing people wear t-shirts with the name train wreck across the front. Oh really? Uh, I never seen the shirts. I oh, see the for shirt. sure. Yeah, humble humble yeah. clothing company. I think it was up in up in Arcata, uh, two thousand one, something like that. They they got smart and started marketing strains on shirts. And yeah, uh, there weren't many, but train wreck was the one that was like you know what you saw. That's perfect. And you're it. right. And you know what? Uh, we never referred to it, or at least my crew being up in Arcata. It was never the Arcata train wreck until years later. You know? Yeah. Um, as a, as a signifier, you know, in terms of where it came from, it was just train, it was T Dub or train wreck. Yeah. Yeah, I think that yeah. popped up on the forums as a designator. You know, yeah. once uh, once it started to be a few fake cuts, and you know, people would talk a lot about the, you know, this is the Arcata cut or this is the E thirty two. Yeah, um, the 32 that, crew or whatever. That uh, seems lemon, to, lemon wreck was another one that was floating around at that point. Yeah, yeah, it seemed to pop up once uh, people started releasing seeds. I think the Dutch uh, somebody there started started messing with it. And um, wood horse was it? It was Tuck was and that? Wood Horse. Yeah, um, Tuck and Wood Horse, the big I, train. I, I remember using name dropping him again, but I remember when. Uh, even though they're discredited when Philos first came out or something, uh, CSI called me up and he goes, do you want to know what, uh, what DNA's uh, lemon skunk tests as? And I was all, what? And he's all green crack. Oh yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately. Yeah. I mean, like it kind of makes sense. Like if they're both skunk one, they would kind of like maybe show up in some range together. Oh but yeah. But I, I, I just I think sure. like there's, you know, and train wreck also the other thing train wreck got known for was that it was the like but long before anyone used the word terpenaline, mm. um, you know, yep. uh train wreck terps. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It got it got kind of a moniker of like, oh, people didn't know what that terp was, but train wreck was famous and well known. And I'm like, oh, this kind of smells like train wreck to me. Yeah, it's got a yeah. train wreck smell. It's yeah, got that, that Jack, one, that Jack, that Jack, that J1 yeah. is trained. That's like training, yeah. isn't it? Jack smell. Yeah. Yep. But, but, uh, but I, you know, but those it's, so it's kind of like, it's, it's almost a bad thing. No, I don't want to say it's almost a bad thing, but any strain that has the potential to be blown out huge has the potential to get a bad reputation because people only try it blown out huge, not dried, right. Not cured. Mm -hmm. Right. Like Matt was saying about, pack's ability to dry it and cure it and treat it nicely um and so sometimes even getting a good example of what made something famous can be harder yeah true yeah true. and and i'll tell you what man uh, you know there's there's times where i put it out and i won't smoke that shit because i'm like no that's not no i don't want to share that with somebody you yeah know for I mean? sure it's not oh yeah Our, we all have this that's wrong <laughs> <laughs> Our buddy, uh, our you know, we had some friends of ours at the gathering that we had or whatever that are quite a bit younger than us. And it was really cool to have them try some of the classics yeah. that had <laughs> faded from popularity like long before they came onto the scene. Yeah. It, it, that was really neat for me, actually. You know? Yeah. It was, that's where I noticed like the kids love <laughs> Blue Dream. You're like, this is Blue Dream? What? This is what oh, it's like. Yeah. What were people yeah, talking just, about? Just watching, just watching the HTML push train wreck on poor local man. I was dying. Oh my <laughs> god! How'd that go? Oh, I didn't see that part. Oh, 
Oh, well, uh, well, we were, we were, he was kind of nodding tell. off. Yeah, he was kind of <laughs> nodding off. And I was like, dude, it's 10 o'clock, man. I'm way older than you. You need to go yeah, take buddy. a you need to go take a train wreck bomb hit. So he went <laughs> <in>. <laughs> he did. I, this, my, mind you, was, mind uh, you, this is this is right before I put a sharpie in his in his pocket to wake him up and say, just pay attention. I was I was I was listening to an interview that Pack had uh, did not very long ago, last week or something. Yeah, and I remember you talking about like train wreck was the weed that like you pulled some bong rips right before you had to do a bunch of work. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like it, it was get after it weed, you know, it gave That's you that right, buzz right. where you felt like you could get some shit done. Absolutely. Like and, and particularly so much so if you if you pull it a little bit early, you know, like oh, you yeah. can train has got such a range of, of when you can pull it and what you want to get off. Of sure it does. You pull it a little bit early and it's just so much more speedy, you know. Yeah. I feel like that's part of uh, part of what gave it its reputation of, you know, big blown out plants pulled it you know 50 days because it it looks good enough at 50 yeah, days enough. at seven yeah. weeks you can yank it yeah it's seven that's, weeks, bro. that's, that's why people... green crack was big with us because like in oh, seven yeah. weeks you can pound it out yeah it's all about getting I mean, seven of a men in a year if you're doing indoor you know seven yeah eight maybe. that yep. that's the and that's another key why people end up getting feel like something's not that great i can't mm. even tell you how much sour diesel in mendocino county was pulled as soon as it was good enough to go. Oh yeah. Like it probably should have gone into the mid seventies and it hit 60 and they're like, it's ready. Hey man, you're yeah. not doing it for the love at that point though. You know what I'm saying? No, That's I get it. The... But you know, but it's, it's like people just don't, I don't think people see like, that's the part about love that I don't think people get where it's mm -hmm. like, you know, if you, it's hard to come across people that know how to grow it the right way that will take it the right amount of time that'll dry it and cure it the right way. So you get that full effect. There's a lot of, it's good enough to go. Yeah. Yep. And it's good enough for the, the buyer won't reject it. Hey man, I'll tell you what, I, I can't say I'm not guilty of that in my past, you know, especially at certain points in time where it was more economically feasible than, you know, just for the love. But I think when you stay in it long enough, at least for me, it's like you kind of mature into your grower status, mm -hmm. right? Like, start yeah. off like, reading high times. I want to grow everything. I got to get it all, whatever. But then you start to kind of not only dial in the plant, but you dial in your style. Yeah. Right? And you dial and in your life. You mature. It was, in your life, right? Yeah. It was, it was a different world too. You, you know, consumers, uh, there wasn't, you know, as many connoisseurs. Yeah, People no. just, they wanted a bag of weed. Um, yeah. And, you know, and they wanted it to be pretty and taste good. And, you know, if you could accomplish that and then get a buzz, it was all good. To be fair, like if I was doing something outside, like any of the things we just mentioned, and it was fall, I could probably let it go if I got good weather until it was perfect, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But if I'm depping it and it's 90 to 100 degrees every day in Mendo, I'm going to hit a point where it's all downhill from here. And I yep. might not get that last five to seven days that I would prefer out of it because it's going to go south because it's 98 and it's hot and the flowers, the calyxes are going to start to yellow. It's going to start to get beat up. I got to pay my rent, you know? Yeah. 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 And, you know, here we had, we had hurricanes every fall, you know, or most every oh. fall. And so, you know, in October, you might get, you know, six inches of rain in a week. Um, you know, it just, it can be terrible. And so sometimes mm -hmm. it, it was good enough to go October one, you know, it's done. I try to explain that to people all the time when it comes to like nature farming, you know, where yeah. you're using, using the sun or whatever that mm -hmm. uh, all downhill from here is an important decision to come to. Yeah, Absolutely. it is. I mean, it really is key because you can, you can be like, Oh, I can make it better. And then you're like, I just made it worse. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. one of the reasons one of the reasons why I stuck to indoor growing because you know you get to play God in terms yeah. of how long something's going to go and and I mean obviously you know there's there's good and bad with both but um, it's it's an interesting uh, distinction because as an indoor grower mainly you know that wasn't a consideration right what time of the year it was unless you know I didn't have the right kind of um, insulation in the in the place that I'm growing or whatnot sure. Um, here we used, I mean, you know, indoor, you know, not that a lot of people wouldn't go outside or whatever, but the problem up here was that it got so hot and dry. We always used to call it summer bud. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Same, same here. Like 
you knew yeah. that you knew the indoor summer bud even just because it was like you cannot keep your shit under a hundred no. just because it's and like people, a, people were running mini splits back in the day you know yeah. no I mean, it was, mini it splits didn't, that way we yeah. didn't you know it didn't that kind yeah. of technology is all the stuff that's common now i don't think people realized how slowly we had some of us adopted it remember how uh, hot the lights but, were Oh yeah, like, we didn't, like we didn't use open, glass, man. Yeah, yeah who, who didn't, didn't use you, they, when you didn't use the shields and they'd be hanging and you'd walk by them and smell your skin burning uh, off them. All yeah, of a Matt, Matt, you know how many burns I have my elbows from running oh, like uh, running like uh, octagons where I had three exposed bulbs hanging in the middle and you had to get in there to do whatever. That that, that was, was always that. so brutal, <laughs> dude. Like you know, I always heard these wives' tales of that guy. Don't put bulbs shit. Remember seeing my skin hanging off a bulb and sizzling, and it being just fine, and it was it was cooking the skin just fine. It didn't explode, but I always heard like, yeah, you don't get oil, your finger oils on that bulb; it'll blow up. So I was always I it was always water. Like, yeah. I don't know. People would like finger oils, like so I'd always like screw them in all careful, like. Oh yeah, I'd always like, grab. Like, a yeah, yeah. I'd grab a hand towel and screw it in because I didn't want 100%. to explode. Yep. Uh huh. Yep. Yep. Oh, you, yep. Pol you polish them before you turn them on. All that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Don't, don't need them exploding. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I mean, maybe, I maybe it was lucky. true. There was a couple times in life where, like, they hit the top of my ear. Woo! That was a pretty Ooh. sensitive spot. Yeah. Because you know? I'm a tall, I'm a tall guy, you know, and so you're yeah, me moving, too. Me you're too. moving around <laughs> and you're trying to. I have that issue too. Yeah. You know, yeah. but yeah, but but one of the things that we should mention too is that you know, and I don't know, high and lonesome, if you want to talk about this, but I would imagine. That when you were crossing uh, Trace Dog to, uh, you know, to Green Crack, um, maybe you could talk for a minute about like something that I'm always interested in, which is like what you were hoping each parent was going to bring to the children. Hmm. Yeah, well, um, you know, basically the only issues I had with Green Crack um, were the structure of the plant and then um, the... Uh, Stru uh, the structure and the high of the plant. So I wanted to um, get something with a little bit more robust structure and something that, you know, had a little more, uh, not depth to the high, because I think the, char the character of Green Crack is really nice, but just something that maybe hits you a little bit harder behind the eyes. Yeah, it's still a skunk yeah. one high at the end of the day. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, Green Crack, in my opinion, is just skunk one um it's yeah. probably it's my really favorite one. yeah yeah it's, a really it's, good it's, one it's definitely my favorite of the skunk one type plants by a big margin um, yeah yeah, yeah. I, you, know, I, you know cheese is great i have run that several times over the years i just i can't smoke it but so much but yeah. something about the like rotten mango green crack is just so appealing <laughs> Mm -hmm. And another one of your, your really well-known cuts, and this is probably what I knew you best for, and one of the cuts I chased the longest, was the Poodle Nuts cut. Can you talk a yep. little bit about that? Who selected the cut, where it came from, etc.? Yes, that was, um, it was selected by a friend of mine from IC, uh, mm -hmm. who went by 40 grit, um, and then I think after that 40 ounce. Uh, several several names over the years, but yeah. he was blowing up warehouses of Urkel before anybody else. He always okay. had the most dialed in Urkel. His shit, you know. I remember smoking his weed and it just being, it was like slingshot ammo. It was dense, yeah. but it it wasn't you know blown out. It was like perfect. And uh, his problem was he was running warehouses of Urkel. He needed something with some hybrid vigor. Um, and he and I used to yeah bullshit a bunch so you know that was one that w when i was making those crosses i kind of pollinated the urkel just to see if it was any more vigorous so yeah. i uh you know once the seeds were done i sent a bunch out to him and he he ran them he found i think two cuts that he really liked but that one was the one that looked more urkely and it you know it got purple but it had increased vigor and increased potency so he started you know running warehouses of that and crushing it, loved it. Yeah, um, nice. And yeah, and his, I mean, his cuts, his selection is beautiful. I've grown it. Um, I've crossed it to some stuff. Um, that line it ended up being, you know, as you 
went through generations of it. There was just more weird stuff popping up from the Urkel. Urkel, um, man. The, the yeah. Urkel. yeah. Yeah. I took it, I think, to F4. And it was just, you know, you'd get more mutants and it would just, it just didn't have the vigor. Um, yeah. It, 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 I don't know. I could have fucked it up, but, uh, you know, it just, it's one of those things that I couldn't go but so deep into. I, I, I can understand that. Um, the actual Poodle Nuts cut is super unique looking. Like, I've seen it express this really unique trait where it looks super knobby. Mm-hmm. It, it's very hard to describe. And, and, and I've seen pictures of some of the outcrosses that have that same trait. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, like uh, bud structure. Yeah, yeah, the knob, knobby bud structure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's um, yeah that that kind of surprised me. It's not quite the you know round balls you get with Urkel, um, it, but it's it's great weed, um, dude. Yeah, it's beautiful. It smells, and I've told people this a million times. Like people always talk about smelling cuts, smelling really rank and veg, and that's a perfect example of one for me mm-hmm. where I can take cuts of that in the living room and in the bedroom. Bryn be like. Did the skunk spray in here? Because it really does smell like skunk spray when you cut yeah. it. Like, yeah, veg. That thing is veg. It's nasty. insane. Yeah, wow. yeah. Nice. And then it finishes up so sweet and nice, you know. Yeah, it's I know. Weird. It's just, it's, <laughs> it's very Urkel-y of it because like Urkel does something similar. It has that similar skunky smell and veg, and mm. you take cuts and it's like, wow, this is gonna be skunky AF. And then when you when you flower it, it's super grapey in the end. You know, it yep. almost gets there. And for people that are younger or don't know or weren't around during the Urkel era. Um, one of the big issues with Urkel was that uh, it's not a very branchy mom. It's not easy to get a lot of cuts off it. And a lot of people would veg it for a long time before they bloomed it because it's kind of a slow grower. You know, nope. it's not. Urkel's the node not spacing those... is insane. That's my Urkel's problem. Awesome. Yeah. Urkel is one of those ones that you kind of have to get it around the size you want it to be when you bloom it. Yeah. And mm-hmm. then it's going to grow like six or eight inches and stop. It's not yep, like a diesel it. or something that has a butt, like it's going to double or triple in size and branch mm-hmm. out. It's just not going to. So when High and Lonesome was talking about like his buddy wanting something with a little bit better vigor, uh, Urkel took its time. It, it mm-hmm. kind of yeah. puttered along. You know, it, the, it was the, for me. It was the node spacing. It just it it was it was it was just constant, just like node spacing oh, yeah. every few centimeters. Yeah, you had to yeah. thin it out and just constantly yeah. stay on it. It took forever to veg. It it used to be, you know, you could grow a haze in the same time you could grow Urkel because yeah. you're gonna have to veg, <laughs> veg it out yeah. three times as long, four times as long, and then when you flower it, you know, it's it's gonna pretty much stay th- that size, like not to so said six eight inches and. That's all you're yeah, no get. jumping. No jumping. Yep. No Most jumping. of my friends up here that were successful growing Urkel, they would be blooming a round of Urkel and they would be vegging almost the entire bloom. Oh know, yeah. For their next round to get the Urkel of his like the root ball and just the plant uh-huh. to be a sufficient size that they could then throw it into the bloom when the when the other round was done and get going. Come to think oh. of it, Urkel another cut that got bastardized by like being passed all around and a lot of crap uh-huh. grows of it. Because like you know, you always hear about how like lame and unpotent Urkel is, but like I've had my head ripped off by good Urkel, like really oh, legit, yeah. put in my ass by good Urkel. It's just rare. Yeah, Our yeah. Urkel. It's all about it. All comes down to the grower and you know the conditions. Yeah. If you grow a giant outdoor Urkel, it's just not going to be that quality. No, I no like rain. Urkel quite a bit, but I I have to admit it doesn't hit me the way it hits some people. Now I I will say mm. Mr. Hill says you do not like purples at all and in fact you agree it's all chickweed ask not to chickweed. Yeah. I, I mean it. it's good to it's good to have strong opinions I suppose <laughs> you know um, but I you said know, Mr. Favorite, Mendo perps what? but you know Urkel is Ur- Urkel for me like I have this weird relationship with with Urkel and that whole round of purples because at least in Cal, I don't know, it, you know, where high and lonesome is, but at least in California, it completely changed the weed game. Yeah. Oh, um, and what I mean by that is before like Urkel and Mendo P and granddaddy purple and that like purple craze of like, Oh, four, Oh, five, Oh, six, that kind of hit yeah. any good weed you grew, generally speaking, sold. Yeah. Yep. And for, I for feel sure. like the Urkel and the purple wave 
was the very beginning of like brokers being like, do you have this? I'll take as yeah. much of it as you've got. And if you yeah. don't, I don't give a shit. I don't want whatever it is. I didn't want to grow Urkel. I liked it, but I didn't want to grow it. But that's what they were asking for. Yeah. And there was a bunch of people that were like, hey, man, I'm having a hard time moving my stuff. <clears throat> and you're like, well, if I give you this cut, they'll take every bit of it. Yeah. And that kind okay. of started the movement of like brokers want this. So I'm going to grow this where wow. I think I think everybody probably on this call would agree. Like before 2004, if you grew fire weed, it was That's just going to go. Yeah, yep. it was. It was going to go. It was going to have a home. And then like the name game with really started with Purple Craze and with Urkel. And then it went to Diesels and it went to Cushes. And it Cushes. Like, yep. But, yep. And a lot of those old strains, like we were just talking, Trainwreck, Green Crack, you know, Blue Dream, you know, all these different things started getting lost to the wayside. Hmm. Um because they weren't as easy to move as whatever was dominant in the scene at the moment. Yep. Absolutely. And we're still playing that game. Yeah. yeah. And that's what ended up making them rare. You know, like yeah. it's, it's crazy that it's awesome that pack loved train wreck and blue dream enough to hold on to the real ones. Yeah, it is. You I'm know, very thankful for it. Um, and most of my collection is just stuff that I personally liked. Yeah. So I held on to it. You know, or, you know, in High and Lonesome's case, it's like, that's really what preservation needs is like different groups being like these cuts I really enjoy. Yeah. And so I'm going to hold on to them and I'm going to grow them nice, regardless of what the market is telling me, because I but care that, about them. I mean, that, that that's the dividing line between chasing the dollar and doing it for the love of what you're doing. Right. You when you when you when you hold on to a cut long enough, it becomes a. A, a partner of yours right like i, I always say train wrecks the longest relationship i've ever had with a girl oh Absolutely, yeah man i say the same thing about the maui because i popped it when i was 18 yeah. yeah you know what i mean you grow up with these things right and they become this intimate part of your life regardless of if people accept it or not if it's if it's in your zone and it's what you want then it really doesn't matter if it comes or goes right i mean it there there was years where train wreck was just one plant in the corner yeah, you know, give me your own. Yeah. I wasn't necessarily monocropping it for you know the whole twenty five years I've had it or however long it's been, but you know she's she's always always kept that special place in my heart. And you know I've been around long enough. I'm not the oldest guy in the world, but I've been around long enough to know that if you wait long enough, shit comes back around, man. Um, and you and you learn by watching others. Never hand your shit over to a tissue culture guy. Well, do that either. the other the other thing I Don't think that's that interesting Nick about Cortez. what we're talking about is that all these elites that we're talking about from back then came about in a time when elites only got popular if enough people like to smoke them. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. it, yeah. this was an era where there was no modern weed marketing. There was no hype machine yet. No. Like things got hyped because people enjoyed growing them. Yeah. And a lot yeah. of people had to enjoy growing them for them to become popular. And not everyone had to like it, but enough yeah. of the community had to like it for it to be desirable. Otherwise, it just kind of would fall by the wayside. I, you know, I had my clockwork sure. orange cut in San Diego and down there it sold really well. It sold really well, <laughs> but I was really stingy with it and I did not like passing it out. And those who had it, I made sure they didn't pass it out. Because it didn't get a lot of exposure, you cannot... Back then, you couldn't convince people that a strain was good unless they got to smoke it. It just yeah. it was very hard to do, and you couldn't force that artificial hype. It was very, very hard to have artificial hype during those days. And even stuff hey, that man, was genuinely it, yeah. good, if it didn't make it around, it just didn't. That's what happened. You know, it just we it had if it was if it was listed as as a fifty dollar eighth in the back page of High Times over in Missouri, then it got some airtime, right? Yeah, you that's know what's funny about that airtime, is that is on the <laughs> internet probably and like in the forums during like high and lonesome's like you know heyday on the forums i i think like the dog what people call the chem 91 now was probably more popular than it was in california because oh, yeah. my friend that passed it out to, to the three or four people that got it he wouldn't let us give it out anywhere and so for the most part um brokers were like well how good can it be if i don't have it yeah Mm. Yeah, I think the forums is where the hype machine kind of got going. Absolutely. You know, you'd have somebody post, you know, an OG Kush thread showing some pictures, talking about their cut, you know, talking about what it goes for in California, and it would just look killer, and, you know, people would go apeshit over it. Mm -hmm. um, 
and that's kind of where it all started. Um, then, you know, people start arguing over strains and, you know, it's, it's gotten us to where we are today. <laughs> I mean, the Lumpus headband. I remember yeah, that being one like yeah. that. Name starting to get attached. F cut. Yeah. Well, you know, people started um, getting their names attached to cuts that they didn't create and they didn't yeah. pop. They just, you know, they were the, the one on the forum who let it out to people. So First it was up, now. On the scene, now right? Yeah. So now it's it's their cut has their name attached to it. And that, you know, that still goes on today, you know, like, oh, yeah. yeah, I mean, you, bet, you better <laughs> kick, you better kick up royalties to some of these motherfuckers. Too. Well, I think, <laughs> I do think there's, I do think there's a difference between like your name gets attached to something because people are trying to differentiate which one it is. And they're saying mm -hmm. it comes from this person. Yeah. There sure. were certainly some people early on um, like Lumpa or, you know, uh, Ken from Ken's GDP or something like that, where they yeah. intentionally attached their name for control. Yeah, sure. Yeah. You know, and some people didn't attach their name for control. It's just like other, it's almost like other, your friends give you a nickname. It's like people on the forum started re referring to things as a certain cut. Yeah. And it mm -hmm. sort of just mm -hmm. organically happened where other people were like, no, I'm going to attach my name to it. Yeah. And yeah, therefore, right. I need credit, or I need money, or I need seeds, or all the little dynamics that developed around possession. And what's funny is, is I can't think of a single person that intentionally attached their name to a cut that was actually the originator of the cut, made the seeds, or popped it. Mm. Let me think there. Oh, let me think about that. Uh, what about strawberry cough? Oh, that's a tough one because I I don't know. Did he pop the seed? No, you got to give it to him. Yeah, oh, really? uh, yeah, yeah, and you know, and nothing against homie or anything like that, but like obviously, no. like the the Chem ninety one right? got skunk it got Skunk VA's name attached to it because he was the first person talking on the forums. Mm -hmm. um, the three people I remember that intentionally attached their name was like AJ attached his name to Sour. Ken attached yeah. his name to GDP <laughs> and Lumpa attached his name to headband. Yeah. All you very all choice me. people. Yeah. You can all hate me for it or whatever, but I, I think those three, at least like they intentionally added their own name. Oh no. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. I think AJ was just the latest of the game on that one. <laughs> I never, I, I never heard of that cut. Um, I took a little break from being online and you know, any of, any of the forum stuff and, I got back on uh, about when I got onto IG and started hearing about AJ Sour, and it's like, man, I've never heard of this one, you know. And it, it just yeah. Yeah. there's so many things that are like that that you know I never heard of that cut. I never heard of this sour cut. How about the that Chaco? That, you're welcome for that. You're welcome. It, yeah. Hey, let, me, let me just let me just point out. Let me just point out. It used to not be a popular thing to put yourself out there in this game. <laughs> you know, yeah, so right. one time. No. Yeah, you know I, mean? I try. You know, Pack. I try to make that point all the time, where it's like yeah. the skill sets that kept us safe for a long time, which is kind of being invisible uh, yeah. and keeping your head down. Uh, you know, a lot of us were indoctrinated into that lifestyle for 10, 15, 20 years, and then all of a sudden, in like 2012 or 2015, people start putting their faces onto things. Yeah, yeah, and that had yeah. never really happened before, and it went against a lot of the. And then people started associating, you know, like, you know, burner with cookie or something like that, like right. where it was sure. like the person that was the most vocal yeah. ends up being like the, the expert or the person that's like the most in charge of whatever the strain is. You must, yep. must be an official on the subject. I mean, what's, <laughs> what's funny about that too, is that I've had a bunch of talks with CSI, um, Urkel. I would say probably Blue Dream and Trainwreck, they all kind of have very mysterious origins. Yeah. I yeah. there's a lot of cuts out there that like I there's a general consensus on most events that led to a cut's creation and the people involved. Yeah. To me, I I've never, I mean, I, I've heard people claim it, but I've never any of those three strains, they popped up and who the hell made them and where the hell did they come <laughs> from and still a mystery to me green green crack and, and crack, Urkel, yeah. all of them uh, and let me let me point out you know that some of that might just be of, of, of design 
Uh, yeah, sure. You know, there's there's a bunch of old boys that that still grow that I have known over my lifetime. They won't touch the internet, and they could care less about having anything to do with anything but doing what they you know keep on keeping on growing the way they have. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, that's yeah. And you know. scammers love that because it doesn't give them competition to the origin story. Very true. Yeah. Like all yeah. of a sudden, you can be like, Urkel came from my farm this <laughs> yeah. year. I did this and there's not going to be anyone that's going to compete it, you know, yeah. a monk showed up on my property and just happened to bless us with this, with this cut or whatever, you know, Yeah, that, that, that was not... almost like the Ken Estes GDP story. And, and at some point I got to cut in oh. because people are going to want to hear the Ken Estes story, H and L they're going to want to hear it. Yeah. And I'm going to, I got something, I got a couple of questions myself. Exactly. See, it's a perfect time to bring it in. <laughs> so uh... the Ken Estes story. From your point of view, how did it go down? Do you remember? Uh, well, I mean, you're the one that tipped me off to it. So it's so I, was the, I was the signal, Ben. You uh, were. Um, I was kind of what an uh, I was kind of in the process of stepping away from the forum yeah. stuff and all that. But I still checked in every once in a while and you know, mostly communicated with, you know, some of some of my old friends on there, Bodie yeah. being one of them. Um but one day you sent me a message kind of letting me know that um, well, Bodie's female Appalachia cut that he kept yeah. had been entered into, what was it? The it was a major cup? cup. It was like a yeah. major cup. Like the yeah, when it, High Times was just barely doing cups. In the US. Yeah, in the U.S. Yeah, I think yeah. it was like the San Francisco, whatever. Yeah. Cannabis cup. yeah. And, um, and Evidently, a cut had been taken from Bodie's mom room yeah. by, I guess, a helper. Yes. And uh, somehow Ken got it and uh, liked it enough that he renamed it Bay 11 and entered yes. it into the cup. So he won the cup with that cut of Appalachia. And to follow up on the success, created a seed line not even using the cut to the best of my knowledge. Yeah, who knows? Uh, uh, from what I think, I if if I'm not mistaken, I think it was he had an OG Kush seed line, uh -huh. and he crossed that to Green Crack and figured you know it'd be close enough, <laughs> and that was so um, that was what came out as Bay Eleven, and I remember it being a you know a big deal. People, people yeah. being like, this, this isn't what that was, you know? Yeah, drastically different. Yeah, so you know, you kind of tipped me off to that story on IC Mag, and I remember, you know, engaging in some conversations about it. Um, yeah, I was, it was shocked that they admitted yeah. it. Yeah, like you know, normally that I was kind of how that goes down. Yeah, like normally that stuff stays wrapped up. Yeah, you know, yeah. I, but Just, yeah, yeah. So that was um. It, it would have been cool to, you know, have won a cup with the name. <laughs> yeah, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> it, was like when, it was still when cups mattered. Like, at that time, there was it wasn't, like, fully bastardized to where there were thousands of cups, you know, hundreds yeah. of cups a year. It was it was when cups, winning a cup could mean the difference between a thriving business or not, you know? Yeah. And it really pushed Ken's business. I mean, most people already knew who Ken was from GDP because he had marketed himself with that. But the cup win boosted the sales for that bay 11 and his whole company and seed launch massively that was why yeah. I, I was like this is fucking gross and, and even the oh, gdp oh, thing with ken is is pretty suspect oh yeah it is it's, it's completely sure. suspect i mean yeah. I, I you know i don't tell this story very much and i'll have to be kind of like i'll have to circumvent around certain parts of it i suppose mm -hmm. uh because uh, the person that I'm going to talk about is like a total anarchist outlaw, like we were just mentioning, who would never want their name to be known. Yeah. Um, but that person um, is who Ken got the GDP from. Yeah. Uh, up in my up in my neck of the woods. And uh -huh. she it actually came from a retiring Vietnam vet mm -hmm. who lived up in the hills by me in the Laytonville area. And um, my friend was uh pretty and female which mm -hmm. uh was pretty rare in cannabis sure. uh, still, uh, is. still is <laughs> but, but but especially as pack will know especially in the humboldt or mendo hills this is even rarer Ooh, boy. 
for a person to like own their own properties and be doing their yeah. own things or whatever else. It was pretty rare back then. So yeah, totally. she was kind of gung ho about it and he was kind of sweet on her a little bit. And so he ended up giving her like, I don't know, 50 or 80 seeds mm -hmm. of, um, of his own hybrids that he had made. And she found GDP in the first batch that she Got popped. It. And the only reason I figured that out really was because um, I helped her build like a, a, a 60 lighter in the woods. Oh, wow. And so um, I knew her before she knew Ken and she gave it to uh. Ken because they were partners together on this thing. Right. And yeah. she wanted to stay totally anonymous. Okay. Yeah. And people don't realize this about, but this is sort of like the era where like the first real dispensaries were opening up in the Bay. Yeah. Um, like places like, yeah, like the like you probably remember pack like the third floor. Oh yeah, you know, um, and sure. stuff. And uh, uh, what was know, the other one? Uh, the vapor room. The vapor room, the third floor. Um, there yeah. was a few of them, uh, not very floor. many yeah. back then. The power <laughs> exchange, I believe, was one you would always talk about. That was the exchange. one that Matt that you were a little <laughs> bit more familiar with. But <laughs> be that as it may, um, Ken was willing. She wanted to stay up in the hills and stay anonymous, right? Yeah. And he was willing to go to the bay and market it. And yeah. so it kind of became I Ken's bet GDP. I bet and there was. was and there was no there, she was fine with it because the mm -hmm. last thing on earth she wanted to do was attach her name or show her face. She had outdoors, she had radar, depth, right? attention. She yeah. was under the radar. She had a yeah. she had, you know, I mean a 60 lighter was a big deal back then. It was a diesel yeah. thing in the woods. Oh, yeah. She wanted to stay completely hidden. Yep. And so Ken's GDP. And that's kind of why Ken's story changes because he heard it secondhand. Yeah, that story. Um, and, and if people want to hear the full story from the, the werewolf's mouth, it, it is uh, there. You can go on Google. And if you look up Ken's GDP story, I forgot what the name of the thing is, but it's some like rapper guy interviewing Ken about it. And he tells oh, this wow. real mumbly story and you can still find the transcript that I wrote online if you look for it. And I oh. actually transcribed it because it's, it's a little screwy uh, until you transcribe and actually see what he's saying. But he says that oh. Native American like shamans thought he was a really great white dude and helped them. And right, that's decided, already wrong right now. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And um, <laughs> decided that he they were going to gift him this magical purple Vietnamese skunk plant. Wow. That's where this came from. So what's <laughs> interesting about that is that the story goes is that the guy that gave my friend the seeds mm -hmm. was a Vietnam vet and had brought back some uh, seeds from his adventures over there when he was in the army. Right. Mm -hmm. And he, it's basically like, as you know, it basically became hillweed. Right. Where he took these sativa and he started crossing it to some of the indicas that started coming yeah. in into the Mendo Humboldt area and trying to get a plant that would finish. And then it sort of became that thing where it's like it was like on that hill and in that neighborhood or whatever. It was like they were running this thing and people had different versions. Makes sense. You know, um, yeah. and it was unnamed. And, you know, and when she popped them or whatever, there was still a variety of like sativa to indica leaning ones. Yeah. And he, they always picked for the outdoor. They always picked a little bit more of the sativa leaners because they needed the stretch. Yeah. And they didn't want um, as much of the moldy density probably too. But a uh, little yeah. two, three foot chunky plant for, uh, for a, you know, a, a woods in, indoor situation was perfect. Yeah. Yeah. especially in the early 2000s and the way that people grew back then, you know, a whole bunch of a whole carpet of plants that were only two and a half, three feet tall and chunked out was a great look. Yeah. Perfect. Yep. Um, and, but yeah, he, you know, he, he, he got that exact cut from her and nobody even knows who she is. That's crazy. Well, you know, I, mean, uh, I was just going to say a Vietnam vet, jump from a vietnam vet to a native american shaman that's not the biggest leap huh yeah i mean you know he did addition here and addition there he's counting yeah. um, well i mean what's funny pack is like you know with you living up in humboldt obviously it's it's mm -hmm. not like the the natives up there have a, like a super high opinion of like you know random white <laughs> dudes like ken you know yeah, uh, that's what he, I was is, he is very at, special right? 
He's yeah, a magic we're, white man. We're invaders. Yeah, he is magic. <laughs> he is a no. magic white man. And that's I mean, why he's so special. Especially in Humboldt and stuff. You know, Humboldt, Coppolo, oh. different places in Mendo. Like, there's a lot of resentment. Yeah. Um, oh, absolutely. Uh -huh. White people did not treat the natives that were living in the valleys very well. Um, but Still yeah, well. he basically, he had to make up a story. And whenever you make up a story, sometimes the details change, That's you know? Right. Okay, so yes or no, not so I'll ask you since you're from the area. Ken Estes, yes or no, Mark Emery, Mini. No, uh, only because, um, you know, uh, you know, I, he just, he basically like, there was, it was more than just you're Ken, welcome. but like. Huh? You're welcome. Oh man. <laughs> but he just, you know, he just took it down to the third floor and it was like, he was one of those guys that was willing to, there was not that many people from Mendo and Humboldt that were yeah. willing to go into those dispensaries and funnel yeah. weed into them. Yeah. Yep. People yep. wanted to be anonymous and he was willing to be not anonymous. And as a result yeah. of that, he got his name attached. Yeah, there's also a really good song on um, YouTube called Leave Ken Alone. Uh, oh, man, really? <laughs> oh, it is so good. I forgot who the rapper is in it, but it's all about <laughs> Ken getting popped and leaving oh. and leave him alone. And it's it's so good. So is there a, yeah. I highly recommend it. Huh. And I, I, I do description in maybe in maybe Ken's defense, <laughs> just just a little bit, because uh, I think this you could apply this to almost anyone that. Uh, um, gets famous around weed is they get famous and they get known for a particular story. And then it's like, it becomes more of maintaining their image than being honest. Sure. Yeah. I think that temptation is a really big temptation and we could talk about lots of different people in the industry where, you know, there's like not very well-known details that are true, but you know, they have a narrative and they have a public persona. And their interest yeah. is maintaining that public persona. That's a lot. Of our yeah, I mean, I I saw this in the UFO world a lot too, where people would be like famous for, let's say, they claim to have an abduction or a UFO sighting, and they get a lot of acclaim for this. And maybe they did see something they they found to be anomalous. Maybe these were they were being totally true or honest at the time. But after that attention goes away and all the adoration and admiration from people and the you're so cool, this is you and the recognition, they uh, slowly get this want need to get those endorphins or whatever it is again, the admiration yeah. flowing. So they'll make it up. They'll they'll force it. They'll force that whatever it is and take that reputation shot. And I see that in weed. It transfers over so well. I mean. Some people yeah. catch lightning in a bottle once and they spend the rest of their life like trying to just chasing that dragon. Huh? Yeah, force that yeah. hype and it just looks that's pathetic. A, that's a thirsty ego, is what that is. Or yeah. people you know? make entire seed companies just based around the one or two things that they're famous for and yeah. only do variations around those things because that's what they're known for. Yeah. Sure. Right. It's super common. I mean, yeah. you know, you were talking. We, I don't know if it was Matt or you, but like we, you were talking about the train wreck name. I oh. mean, I heard, that, you know, wasn't there rumors that like the E32 it was because it was like the 32nd generation? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a 30 like second, 30 second attempt to, to re repro the original. Yeah, yeah, something, something wild. Hey, HL, <laughs> wasn't that a crew, the E32 crew? Uh, I'm not sure if it was, was it a crew, really? but I remember that. Um, you know, that term coming out on the forums and it was like, no, you don't have train wreck if you have the arcade cut. The E32 cut is the one. Uh, I remember yeah. Calio. Calio is a part of the E32. It was like an early DHK type thing. I don't know. I don't know. I know one person who'd know. I kind of bugged him about that and asked. But yeah, I was trying to remember because yeah. I know it was that, was it Berkeley Patients Group that, that Eric worked out of? No, it was the uh, Humboldt... It, that was his name on the forums, like A E R I C. No, it was the, it was the arcade, uh, whatever that dispensary was. It opened up, I think, off of yeah, that's right. It wasn't Berkeley. Like You're right. Yeah, yeah. BPG was, was, like was a, different. Yeah, yeah. Like eleven, there was a club, like one of the first clubs that opened up in Arcade was off of Eleven Street. Now, uh, apparently, that's it was right. That dude, Eric. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and so there was the Calio story from him, and then there was the um, train wreck, and mm -hmm. it does predate him. Yeah, but he he is the cut that goes around 
is from him, if I remember correctly. And I'm sure someone will correct me if I get that wrong. But uh, yeah. The E32? Yeah. The, the cut that goes around that everybody has came via him and was passed out by that collective. Um, not the, call, not the hundred percent original, and nobody has. Yeah, that. not the right, right, right. I mean, Crybaby was Crybaby knows pretty extensively. He's done his research there. I think you're right. That sounds like yeah. what he was saying. Yeah, yeah, he knows that story about the. E32 I've never seen the E32 cut though. I mean, I haven't put it up against the one that I've held on to, but um, I don't know. Do you? Do you guys? I think it's that cut. That I think cut it's the is. same cut. I think it's the same cut. Yeah, I've never seen it. I've just you know seen the forum hype about it. Yeah. I'm pretty oh, sure I that's the, the cut that was out of there from Eric. I'm pretty sure that's the one that everybody has or that has it now or that had it back then. Uh-huh. That's hard to, I don't know. I just so think is that so the one, that, is that the one that CSI version. has then? Yeah. Yes. Well, I'll, I'll tell you that I'll tell you that my cut didn't come from him directly. I got my cut from the boys up in the hill. So here's yeah. the story, right? Come 2000, uh, you know, we're all into clones and we're not popping seeds. And uh, my, my roommate, uh, partner at the time uh, knew this girl in Arcata and uh, she was real, uh, you know, a cute little kid or whatever, you know, kind of ditzy mm-hmm. and whatnot. And he asked her for some cuts and she's like, sure, you know, I, someone's helping me. She runs up into the hills. I want to say it was up in Neeland area mm-hmm. and uh, got, a, got a flat of T-Dub, he brought it down and didn't tell them that she wasn't getting it for her own read up. Yeah. She ended up giving it to us. Right. And that was my first introduction to the plant. I hadn't even seen it prior to that. And, in the years a uh, couple of years before that and so we're growing this thing and then come come to find out she's getting hawked by these cats all of a sudden because she wasn't supposed to let that fucking thing out <laughs> and that's exactly the same time that arcada we didn't call it arcada trainwreck then but the yeah, yeah. started getting really prolific in arcada and it was fucking everywhere it's just you couldn't get away from it yeah um and then not too long you know two three years into that all of a sudden people we're bringing their cuts in and bringing their, their work in. And it was, you know, rare, you know, you had 10 people oh, line yeah. it up and all, and it was rare that you got that original, uh, you know, plan a cut from that plant. That's I think because of like the tuck seed lines, the wood horse seed lines, I finally got a hold of a wood horse. We can talk to him oh, finally for an interview, nice. which would be cool. I think. Um, yeah. He was responsible for a lot of the train wreck out there. That head seed, remember grateful head, H and mm-hmm. Yeah. He did. Um, Oriental Express, I think. Yeah. Yep. That, yep. Yep. Um, but who, um, God, who else did something with it? Billy Goat. Yeah. Did he? he did, yeah. yeah. He did. He did an Oriental. I know he at least did the Oriental Express too. We could do Billy a Goat. public service announcement. Uh, don't name your seed line after a famous cut. Yeah, <laughs> please don't. Please don't. Please pick, don't. Pick, pick a different name. Pick, this pick is why we have never name. seen the same SFV OG cut after Swerve released that line. Yeah, never again have we seen that. Uh, cut. Don't name it. Don't name it the exact cut name, please God. Or Larry or Tahoe are <laughs> all kind of just like up yeah. in the air on if you ever see those cuts again that they'll ever be anything like they were originally because so many mm. seeds were sold under those exact names. You know. Yeah. Yeah. It makes it makes it hard. You know, and uh, yeah, yeah, and I, I will say that the Santa Cruz wreck is not from Santa Cruz, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Just so you know. Yeah, but that that's super common too. I mean, Matt and I were chatting about that. Like, if you got snow in Humboldt, it was Humboldt snow. If yeah. you got oh, it yeah. in Oregon, it was Oregon snow. If you got it in Eugene, it was Eugene snow. Or if you got it in Bakersfield, it was Bakersfield snow. Because that's oh. yeah, well, that's a different thing, Matt. That and didn't then, happen. And then. Yeah, that's what's, a different- and then you know people yeah. would get it and they would change the name and they would bring it to different places and like names have always been very uh very odd part of the history yeah mm. so you, you well, know i found out about a local strain here that i never heard of um it's actually a city in the mountains 45 minutes from here but it's it's very close and it's called the tehachapi terror and i found it in a magazine from the 70s and i know nothing else terror. about it but yeah it sounded so cool the hatchet be terror. Some bag bag seed mashup. Yeah, bag I seed mean, mashup with <laughs> garb. Does it yeah. back to you or to Matt? Does anybody know? Like, what uh, is the blue dream origin story? Since we've gone over like not knowing what train wreck is, what is blue dream supposed yeah. to be? I've heard oh, I've Matt, heard a few different me. theories. Hi and lonesome, what do you got? I don't blue dream wasn't in my world. Um, we yeah. were we had green track and train wreck. Blue dream wasn't as big out here. The only stuff I saw, you know, was flown in. 
So, so that specific cut, when it was first given to me by Bodie and the people who kind of were around the Santa Cruz area that knew the, the crowd that was giving it out or where it came from, all said it was 98 Blueberry from DJ, that specific cut that he would pass around crossed a super, specifically a Super Silver Haze from Greenhouse. And I only know of one company that ever released that specific cross. And I don't know if it came after or before. Hmm. Hmm. It's one of those things, chicken before the egg. And it was the blue hen from um, Bluegrass Seeds, Kentucky yeah. some Seeds, something like okay. that. Yeah, it was the blue hen. And, and I remember seeing pictures of both in the Canada Bible. So I'm not sure which came first on that. But they were both similar type plants that I'd imagine you could find similar expressions uh, if they were both using similar lines to make them, I would imagine. You know, the only variation I would add to that that I've heard is um, this uh, haze that people refer to as a Santa Cruz haze mm -hmm. being being that cut that was uh, used with, with the blueberry. Um, I have yet to see the Santa Cruz haze. I don't know if this, this is just a a myth or if it's i would i would almost bet my left nut that it would be a super silver haze based on the the, mm -hmm. the turf profile and everything else i would be pretty mm -hmm. pretty dead on especially because how quickly it finishes still all that yeah yeah because the, the johnny blaze i think was uh I can't Neville's haze. yeah it was yeah. legend seeds neville's haze yeah, yeah and that one took a little bit longer and it, it still did. got kind of big like neville's um i could definitely see super silver haze being the, yeah. the father pack i remember if i remember correctly i think super silver haze got dropped as a seed line in 97. Mm -hmm. i think it won three cups in a row in in uh in the cannabis cups in holland mm -hmm. um and I believe it was like 97, 98, 99, something like that. I could be wrong. Maybe it was 96, but it was something along those lines. I think you're um, right. 97. Right around there. It was right around there. That's right. Yeah. I think you about know. like old SOG Super Silver Haze cut. Like if I cross that to the DJ's cut, DJ's mom of Blueberry that he sold when he was going around giving lectures and stuff. If I cross those two, I'm pretty sure I could nail that thing pretty fast. And it would, it would be pretty regular occurring. Yeah, pretty sure. So yeah, I, I I could see how that could be, definitely. One thing I'll one thing I'll interject is that at the little gathering that we just had, um, one of the favorite things I smoked was a uh, a hybrid pack made that was a uh, Blue Dream by Trainwreck. Oh Man, yeah, that's good. That's and so good. One of the one of the things I'll say about it is that I think terpeneline has a lot of depth to it, but it's so forward and strong, like it overpowers a lot of people and yeah. that blue dream hybrid with train wreck that blue dream brought like a sweetness in that almost like took like the the edge off that train wreck flavor oh yeah but kept, nice, dude. but like but the the flavor of train wreck was still there it just wasn't like the predominant knock you it just took a top. step back right it yeah, just took a step, step back. back there was like a yeah. sweet it's, it's almost like with cooking where like you add some acidity or you add some, you know, yeah. you add something to balance out your sauce. Yeah. So it, was like, it, had, it had that brightness come through. That yeah. It had the brightness, brightness for sure. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, you know, uh, we joke a lot that like once you get terpenaline in something, it's really fucking hard to get it out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. And totally. I didn't think anything could tame uh, the train wreck nose so much. Mm. Um but that hybrid, it really allowed the terpenaline to shine because it gave it a sweetness. I actually did a review on the Blue Dream train wreck in a previous episode, in a short oh. episode. So go check that out if you're interested. But yeah, it yes, I, I was I was really impressed because it was <laughs> nice two play. very two things I was very familiar with, and they combined really nicely. Yeah, that yeah, I think that surprised a lot of people and may have been. I think uh, other than the Blue Dream, I think that was probably the one that everybody gravitated to pretty hard. Yeah, you know, it's all it's all luck. It's all luck, bro. Yeah, yeah. but you still did it. <clears throat> it's luck with intention. Oh, yep. good love. Yeah, I, you know. I came home from the party and I popped some. That's right. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Yeah, so did I. I think everybody did. They're like, Fuck yeah. <laughs> so that that's, that's that's kind of the impression that that that's kind of the impression that it made. Where I just yeah. had to say that. Uh, 
two old school, you know, pretty famous things uh, that crossed really well together. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You know, the one thing that I, that I, I appreciate that not so, by the way, but all you guys, I appreciate that, you know, your input with that. I want to say that the thing that I was struck most with was um, not, not just T-Dub taking a back step, but then the train wreck comes through and pushes up the potency a little bit right oh yeah oh yeah you know both of those in and of themselves if you don't if you're not used to smoking them and your body's not used to taking it in it can, they can both hit you pretty hard in their own way yeah um but it's it was it's nice to be able to smoke both of the original parents side by side and then go over and hit hit that combination and see where it kind of got enhanced or got pulled back um yeah. so it was really it was really a cool treat to to be able to watch my buddies you know and partake with my friends in terms of looking at that in real time and uh, getting that feedback, you know, it was really kind Any, of a special thing to do that. Anytime you smoke like 60 things in two and a half days, uh, <laughs> yeah. it gets, even, even just smelling things, you smell five or six things in a row and you're like, your so nostrils are kind of burned out for 10 minutes. But um, mm -hmm. the quality well, of that, that hybrid shown in my opinion it while we're really while dope. we're talking about this stuff let's talk about some of the the stuff we saw at the party and some of the different things that we uh noticed didn't notice i mean um pack it was your first time there i am it was your first yeah. time coming to the one of the gatherings so um yeah maybe maybe you guys uh, i don't know which one he wants to start but talk, talk about some of the screens you saw what you thought was the most unique what you thought uh probably bummed you out the most and yeah all that Sure. Um, you know, as we were just talking about it, pox stuff surprised me. Um, you know, that that one in particular, um, just how the train wreck came through on some of his hybrids. It it took a back seat. I've grown quite a few hybrids of train wreck. It's yeah. normally a, a variation on the theme. You know, it's it's train wreck yeah. with a tiny bit of this or a tiny bit of that. But, you know, his hybrid seemed really well blended. That one in particular, I really enjoyed. Um, uh, Bitters Grow of Shoreline was... Oh, yeah. Oh, that was amazing. That was great. Um, and his um, dog shit, uh, Electric Boogaloo. Yeah, you um, eat. Yes, sir. Both of those were great. Um, it was just a lot. Yeah. Um, Another one that really stood out to me was the Death Star. Yeah. Several people, you know, Panda brought some, local brought some. Mm -hmm. um, and that had such a, it was a lot uh, ranker than I thought it'd be. It almost had like a Kim D rankness to it. Yeah. And it was, you know, in that level as far as potency, I would say. But it was yeah, like, definitely. Instead of being like that nasty garbage, it was like nasty polyester yeah. uh, i don't it's it's hard to say but it was just it was it's very complex very frank and uh, it's pretty fucking hard <laughs> yeah i dug it yeah, yeah. That does start, else, uh, definitely it's a it's, it's unique absolutely unique how about you pac what did you see well, it stood out man i mean it, there, there was so much novelty going around that it's hard to kind of determine some from the others i was blown away by the cob just for the fact oh, yeah. that we had a year old cob sitting there and uh you know Bodie brought that through that was that was pretty amazing i wasn't sure if i was supposed to eat it or smoke it so i just smoked it <laughs> oh i thought we were supposed to boof it yeah well you can you can, you can. and let me know how that goes Bodhi told me who made it, so I just stuck it up my my. Ass. Yeah, I think that's probably what made you sick. Yeah, you it know? probably was because yeah, I probably it's knew fermented. exactly what I was going to do with it and poisoned it. <laughs> he knows what I do with everything I get. It just goes. Up <laughs> it so what else did you hole. like? Um, you know, I mean, honestly, it you know jumped in before I could speak, but um, you know that the electric boogaloo, amazing. You know what I mean, and yeah. and I'll tell you what uh, that shoreline brought me back to my days in high school. Uh, oh yeah, you know yeah, I just like, felt like yeah, man, I felt like it was ninety three all over again. You know? <laughs> it's a time capsule, man. That's a great one. Absolutely, I, I look so forward to growing that too. By the way, so um, but yeah. uh, you know one that one that threw me off guard that I wouldn't have gone and picked up. Um, on my own but happened to hit it and it and somehow or another it cut through everything for me at that moment i got so high 
I remember watching Skid just laughing at me, looking at me like, "Dude, you're, <laughs> you're stuck right now." Was that uh was that Moonbow? Uh, oh really? Uh, Lush, that's, that's Lush you, huh? brought, that was good. Dude. It was good shit. Yeah. He brought and you know it could have been that I was on the you know twenty fifth hour of the day. That might have been it. It was four in the morning, you know, whatever. Yeah. Well, I don't remember the time. I don't even remember where I was, but I remember hitting that and just kind of floating off into this like other place for a while and, and uh, feeling embarrassed because, uh, you know, someone was laughing at me uh, in my reaction. I liked it <laughs> enough to put a picture up of it on Instagram and post about it. So it was it was pretty good. Yeah. It was really good. It was exceptional. I mean, I, I've gone I've gone and revisited it since because, you know, I was lucky enough to be able to bring some uh, party bags back. And, you know, it's really not that bad. Uh, it's not something that I would necessarily have in my armory, you know, in terms of I want to grow this and, and get into it. But I, I might, you know, I might do that if I had the right cut. But um, that one stood out. Uh, you know, uh, our buddy Denali came through with some, some D, uh, mm. some sour Denali, which, you know, to this day, I'm still kind of just breaking little pieces off because the flavor is amazing. Yeah, he brought uh, some silver D, too. I like the silver D. He did. That <laughs> silver, pro, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the silver fox. Right? Yeah, the silver that silver fox. It's That's right. You call it silver fox. That twenty one percent, right? Yeah, the twenty one percent or that. Yeah, yeah. Thanks to yeah, scientific uh, silver pearl. Yeah, twenty one percent. Twenty one percent. Smashing, yeah. and yeah, yeah. I, I made a post about that by the way, and. um oh. Purple Scientific chimed in. They're like, yeah, that's not right. That's not how it should go. And a few other people chimed yeah. in and were like, yeah, my machine has, isn't working for me like that. You know, maybe get huh. turned it in, okay. get it tested. And they're like, yeah, tell your friend to, you know, get a hold of us. We'll replace it. DM us. So I DM yeah. them. And they said, it's not mine, but I'll, I'll be happy to talk to the guy. And they're like, what are you talking about? And I was like, hmm. you told me to DM you. And they're like, no, he didn't. Weird. Like, okay. Okay. And left it at that, but yeah, no, that thing was. We all saw it. Like everybody there yeah, no, sat no, around and watched this thing nail twenty one percent on just ridiculous stuff like across the board. A board, the board. I mean, I got, I got. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I was going to say, I got. I just got one more shout out, bro. One more shout yeah. out, if I can, uh, to CB, uh, to our buddy Crybaby, um, and and some of the magic that he, he weaves. Uh, our friend Panda came down from way up north, way in the Arctic, uh, made the trip down. And I think uh, another friend of our ring, our friend of our ring, rings, ring. Uh, yep. grew out the Meteora 4, I yeah, believe. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. And brought that down. And then um, somebody had, had the, uh, what is the BO, the uh, burnt offering next to that, which is, a, I guess, a grandchild of the uh, Meteora. And it was nice to have those side by side because, um, you know, just smoking that for an offering a couple months back um i was like wow this is very unique this is not something you usually get um often and uh having that next to the meteor forward seeing that kind of uh relation between the two uh, those that, that was pretty interesting for me to be able to get to do that so that definitely sticks out in my mind meteor four was probably my favorite like uh what would be traditionally considered sativa leaning type there that was yeah my, the, my favorite out of all of them in that category what about you, Natsu? What about you, Matt? What... Natsu, go ahead. What, what are you? Where I'm going to take a different tact, I think, in that uh, my favorite part of the gathering was the people. And yeah. the the reason I say that is because, you know, when, when we threw these parties earlier, they were kind of based around the Emerald Cup. Um, it was sort of like a way for heads and, and friends to gather after the sort of like the big, the big gathering itself. Uh, and this time was different and then it was intentional. Um, and it was friends that mostly talk online to each other coming from, in some cases, literally all over America. Yeah. Coming from yeah. the far East, from the far North, from, you know, people spent a lot of time and energy to make sure that they could come. And, you know, I really, it was no joke think... getting it. It was no joke once they hit the airport to get to where the party was, but yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. And, and I do think that like, you know, especially with COVID and stuff and people being trapped in their houses and being able to spend a lot of time online, you can make some really good friends. But I do think it really helps to spend a few days like breaking bread with someone, getting baked with them, eating food, shooting the shit. I mean, uh, what, what, one of my, I mean, one of my, one of my favorite Hanging out things, in Nussle's Love Den, you know. Yeah, yeah. One of my favorite things about the event is that, you know, our, our homie who's uh, bitter uh, you know, he gets up at like 4.30 in the fucking morning or something. And so he starts toughing Holy puff. Shit. And whenever I go to one of these events, I wake up and I just hear his laugh. 
Yeah, yeah. that's great. Yeah. You know, <laughs> because it. it's uh, hey, yeah. shout out, shout out to Bitter and his wife for holding it down. Yeah. By the way, there was yeah. this, there was this memory I had where I got yeah. up in the morning, and uh, Bitter was on like his like twelfth joint or something because he was just <laughs> tent on trying all this shit. <laughs> and uh, high, high and lonesome had just woke up and bitter handed him this joint it was like a chem d joint laced with uh chem d keef yeah, oh yeah and high and lonesome <laughs> took two three hits and he was like man Good this morning. is like this is not the starter mix for my day <laughs> i think I he went back to pause. bed he went back to bed after that actually i went to, I I need to pause <laughs> And so just, but, but, you know, faces to names, hearing people's voices, getting to see people's sense of humor mm. where it's not typed out, but it's in real time. Um, you know, the I internet agree. is cool because it brings, it can bring people together, but being able to spend time, I think, yeah. and just, it was a, it's like a prop, it was a proper to me, like old school harvest festival. Yeah. For where sure. you yeah, have a absolutely. bunch of real weed people sitting down, making friends, talking shop, eating food, joking, sharing their passion, basically, you know, yep. um, and that, you know, there was enough of us there that each brought some of our old favorites, uh, that there was a lot of good favorites there. Yep. And yep. I rem I can't remember who it was. It was like, I'm not going to call them out because that would be rude or anything like that. But I remember Panda mm -hmm. telling me that one of the guys that came brought like all this like new school za, yeah, you know? Yeah. And yeah. after he smoked the shoreline and the electric boogaloo and some Trent and some this and that, he like took all his weed and he put it back in the bag because he was like, man, you know, <laughs> I don't even care about my weed. He's like this right here. Yeah. And it's neat because, oh. you know, we're all older now or whatever. And we don't realize that stuff that we have a lot of experience with, most new school smokers that have only been around for eight or 10 years missed the era of almost everything that all four of us have been talking about this entire time. Yeah. If sure. You started smoking in like 2010, 2012. If you kind of got into the scene in the last 10 or 15 years, mm -hmm. uh, you probably didn't smoke real train wreck or real blue dream or real green crack or what the hell is trace dog or, yeah. you know, it's like, cause weed, it's like a flash in the pan. Right. Yep. It's yeah. like, it really is. And, uh, and so for me, you know, there's lots of, there's lots of favorites I have, but, um, I just, I, I enjoy spending time around people who share my interests. Yeah. And are yeah. My I agree. I agree. So, aside from, aside from being able to get, uh, to meet H in person, I, I say that you're correct. That yeah. Good. And well, even, even on that, you know, like, so I'm in the kitchen and you know csi and bodie and h and l are all talking um and they're like eating like you know we're eating like smoked fish that panda had brought down from alaska and we're smoking weed from over here and h and l and bodie and and csi have known each other since the early to mid 2000s yeah, yeah. and it was yeah. probably the first time they met in person yep sure was all, all three of them cool. yeah you know, yeah. so even that that kind of stuff right there, I just think is super cool. I mean, me and H and have a company together, and that was the first time we've met. Like, <laughs> that was, that was fun. <laughs> I remember I was like all 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 frantic as I came in the door because I was the last one there, and like hey, I was driving. Matt? Yeah, I was driving in the <laughs> canyon. I can't see for shit. It was super dark, so it was taking forever. Mm. So I finally get there, and we br had to bring the dog because it's big and wild. Nobody else going to take care of him. And I had to carry in like three rooms of shit just for the dog. And so I am yeah. dead tired. And I remember walking by hugging someone I thought was Panda. Cause I've seen pictures of Panda, but I'd never met Panda hugging. Mm -hmm. him, thinking I hugged Panda went downstairs, came back upstairs and goes, where's my motherfucker <laughs> high and lonesome. And he's like, all right, you already hugged me, bro. And I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I feel dumb. But yeah, no, I mean, H H &L like, had to go. H &L had to go put a sticker on his chest just so he could. I know he's. Oh, there you are. <laughs> so undercover. So all of a sudden, he started getting all kinds of attention once he put that sticker on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, aside, aside from that, you know, yeah. seed swapping, clone trading, talking about your favorite strains, getting to share your favorite stuff with your friends. You know, sure. uh, I like just, watching local smoke P ninety one. That was cool watching the, uh, the youngin fucking smoke an old San Diego strain and like fall in love with it. Oh, the other thing, maybe I'll maybe I'll throw this out there too. Is one of the things that I liked about uh Dead Tour 
was that you could be at a campsite hanging out with people your age, people in their 30s, people in their 60s, you know, mm -hmm. where a lot of a lot of times you're really only hanging out with like your own age group. Mm -hmm. And we had people there from their mid 20s all the way up to their mid 60s. Yeah. Yeah. There it was, was probably a 40 year, you know, I mean, probably like, yeah. you know, uh, Denali and his late, you know, there was there was some yeah. senior citizens there. There was some kids that were, in our opinion, are barely out of their diapers. Um, <laughs> you know, and, and I remember, you know, I and remember, some that are barely in their diapers. Yeah. I remember <laughs> yeah. Panda looking over at me and being like, dude, I've never been to anything like this in my life. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah to be able to I stoke people out like that is one of the coolest things on earth and you know i, you know, I think i st i think i stopped matt once at one point and i looked at him and i said dude this is one of those moments in time that's quite rare uh to come across so um don't you know just recognize but, well, i wasn't telling him to recognize but i recognize, I'm recognize yeah I, right I agree with you i just think people taking their time and their energy and money and flying and driving and prepping yeah. and all the effort that went in to just have a nice time with friends for a weekend and talk shop. Um, right. You know, I can I felt yeah. high, honestly, like for days afterwards and it wasn't, oh, yeah. from, it was no, just, no, no, I just but, enjoyed yeah. myself immensely. There was yeah. a lot of uh, positive intention for being, yeah. there, that was pretty cool. And, yeah. I, and uh, you know, I think uh, I think that kind of like bonding with people in person is important. Yeah. Um, Bryn has never been to one of our gatherings before my chick. Mm -hmm. And she went this time. And like when we got home, she was like, I finally get it. I finally get how you bonded with these guys and like why you guys love each other as much as you do. Or why you guys mm -hmm. are so loyal and close. She's like, I love those dudes now, too. I feel like they're family. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Hey, man, you know what? I I can tell she's not in the room because she didn't throw a shoe at you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Dodge. Hey man, I'll tell I'll tell you what, dude. Uh, the one thing I want to say about that is, you know, the the world that I was brought into because I didn't grow up in the weed scene. I I jumped into it, you know, junior high, high school kind of thing. But the 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 old cats that I that brought me in under their wings, that was the energy and that was the the philosophy. You know what I yeah. mean? It was. You know, there were people with egos, of course. There's people, you know, some assholes out there and whatnot. But for the for for the most part, there was this cultural like consideration and this this bigger picture that was going on besides the plant. And the plant brings you together, but there's a certain way, you know, of of kind of interacting with people that that really kind of solidified that era for me. And to be able to fast forward twenty some odd years and, and get a touch of that, you know, a taste of that again in, in a very unique kind of situation, uh, you know, kind of brought back some some uh, some hope on my behalf, right? Because yeah. I'm watching everything else fall out. I'm not joining the big the big. I'm, I guess I'm not riding the wave, or at this point, I'm not, and it's not my thing. But um, to know that that was still well and alive, and all we had to do was, uh, you know, kind of let it okay. unfold naturally and get there, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there were a lot of a lot of young guys, like not just said, you know, a huge age gap. But you know, we're all weed people. We're all, you know, very much in similar. It. Yeah, we're in it. Um, and it was I, great, great to see. I've tried to oh, drive home, cool. like in our, our our Discord Patreon, to like the the people that hang out there and the breeder syndicate with us and talk stuff and like get really into the nerdy end of stuff. Is like yeah. when when they hear us talk about the can Illuminati, they like you know they they kind of first are like. Yeah, is it like some underground, like, you know, they don't realize like it was named as kind of like a, a tongue in cheek joke just because it was like it wasn't anybody who gives a fuck. It wasn't any of the, the famous people yeah. that you'd see in cannabis, like as the main faces. You wouldn't see Snoop Dogg there. You wouldn't see Sherbinsky. Right. You wouldn't see any of those guys there. Um, but what you did have was the most passionate people in cannabis, I felt like I that's all it's ever been about. It has nothing to do with how long you've been doing it has nothing to ma nothing to do with how good you are at doing it not yeah. even that it has to do with your passion your drive and like how intent you are to to make this your your passion really i think that's how we all found each other that's <laughs> for sure yeah for sure but i it's, it's, I, uh, it's pretty it's pretty cool you could be on the same level as, as a brother you had never met from halfway across the world and you guys yeah. walk in the door and it's as if you knew each other your whole life you know what I yeah mean? it's like, crazy man nothing better I definitely think it, I definitely think it strengthened some friendships, you know, um, which, which is pretty cool. And in, in, yeah, in the sure. fact that it was pretty quick, 
either way. Mm. Yeah. As far as the actual weed goes, since I pontificated a bunch about like just like the human, <laughs> the human element. You hit um, everybody. Feel. I, yeah. I've been, I've been <laughs> super clear that I think that the 90s and the early 2000s was sort of the golden era of weed. Mm -hmm. And so most of my favorites are things from that era. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. the chems, yeah. the cushions, the train wrecks, the blue dreams, the shoreline um, mm -hmm. for my for my age or whatever, I just find most of that older weed hits me better. Yeah. It gives me a better effect. And even if it's a wide variety of effects, it's the rare weed that's been made in the last five or six years that hits me like some of that older stuff. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so having a bunch of friends bring their personal favorites, you know, uh, you know, we, he mentioned it, but bitter brought, you know, two, three kinds, maybe four kinds of Kush along yeah, with the yeah. electric boogaloo along with the shoreline. And then oh, high, and lonesome had, high and lonesome had some chem D and some, and some head and fire chem D by the way. Yeah. And oh, some, yeah. and some yeah. different things. And then, you know, a uh, pack had, uh, you know, train wreck and blue dream and classics. Blue and, the blue garlic train wreck was a big hit too. People. Don't yeah. Know. And, um, you know, yeah. there was, there was a few different people that brought the, the, you know, the death star and, and just, you know, and just different things like that. I mean, uh, you know, it eventually, you know, at first I was like, oh, I wonder if there's going to be enough weed. And then I was like, man, I wonder <laughs> if there's enough places to put all this weed because it like we kept yeah. moving tabletops and, and all that. And uh, well, not yeah. so usually brings it all like like most of the parties. It's it's been like 90 percent. Your, your yeah. weed, yeah. So and this year you're really, like, fuck, I'm not gonna bring be bringing a bunch of stuff. So we were he was, he was like, concerned, yeah, stuff. yeah. And it, it, was, well, it, awesome. it was that way because I, because I had a, greenhouses and stuff like that. Even if I'm like monocropping, say two things for the market, yeah, I would have a twenty by thirty bed that was a bunch of head stash. Yeah, yeah, sure. And it was just me, and, you know. So the first two three parties we did, I don't know, Matt. I probably brought pounds. It was oh you know, yeah, <laughs> like. Yeah, for, like yeah, for real, they, like I it mean, it was like pounds of each individual thing. I like, probably brought like you know, there was probably like four or five pounds of like you know total, but it was like thirty-five different things, you know. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. No, I think it was like one to two pounds of like thirty-five different things. Yeah, it, it was remembering it. it Whatever was it was, lot. it was it was a button. And, and and then the other cool part lot. of it is, in a commercial environment, just everyone sharing, being super generous, giving samples to all their friends. You know, mm -hmm. CSI, uh, you know, dumped a bunch of, uh, you know, various crosses he'd made on the ground so that anyone could grab them up. Yeah. People were exchanging yeah. seeds and information. I think I should shout out too. I brought, you know, not everybody could do this because some people flew and didn't drive, but yeah, I brought some mementos from my past. Um, Matt brought a bunch of very cool um, magazines and old art and uh Books, you know yeah, rare, yeah. rare rare um you know catalogs, catalogs yeah. of different things for people to look through and no one know? stole anything well like, not so I mean, good but we, we yeah, oh yeah not yeah forget not yeah. so stole but something. that just that, i think that just ended up in my stuff more yeah, than, yeah. More you're than the only other person it. that brought books you know yeah. Yeah. yeah so it just ended up in my stuff but but just just a bunch of friends, you know, cooking and eating out and and smoking things and chatting and all that. Yeah. It really does make a difference. Yeah. Well, and the know? vibe too, right? Like it wasn't a competition. It wasn't about who's got the biggest uh, ego or the biggest issue. It was, you know, really kind of this this joining, right? Like, hey, I check think, this out. Check I think that, that makes know? a difference too. Like, honestly, we've talked about like, do we want to make it like a cup event? We've talked about right. it a few times between a few of us, and it's like I. I don't know, man. Would that change it? Like, cause even, even though it's all really close friends as men were competitive, you know, to a degree. Yeah. And if you have yeah. like a prize or something that we can all like <laughs> argue over, like flex on, even flex on each other over, it just changes the vibe completely. So I don't I mean, know. the yeah, hard thing too, is when you have a party like that with the way that weed works, it's like a snapshot in time. Yeah. So there was thing, there was friends of ours that couldn't come because of conflicts um, mm -hmm. there was weed that was almost done that couldn't make yeah. it, that was on the line, you know, but not quite ready to be in the bag. So it was kind of like, what do I have ready at the time? Yeah. And some yeah, of it was a little sure. fresh. Some of it was a little was, old. Yeah. Some of it was perfect, yeah. you know? Um, yeah. but really what it was is it was mostly just like, 
you know, it's kind of like everybody brought stuff and it's like, here's what I do for love. And here's what I'm cropping right now to survive. Yeah. And here's yeah. a variety of things that, that incorporate all that, you know? I mean, how better can it get, man? You know? No, it was, I'm not, I, you know? I mean, the only thing, my only complaint with it was that um, it needed to be like an extra two days. Yeah, for yeah. sure. And I needed, <laughs> I needed like a humidifier yeah. and throat loss. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I, uh, we had it in a pretty, we had it in a pretty dry mountainous part of California. And with mm. all the talking and smoking, I was like a husk. Yeah, you sounded uh, bad at the end of the day. True. Yeah. You know, I think all of us, uh, most people I talked to uh, or heard their voice for three or four days afterwards were in the same position. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It took yeah. a minute. It took a minute to it recover. Took a minute. Yeah. Um, I'm going to give sure. a shout out to Crybaby. He sent this, and I'll, I'll, I'll give a plug to the company too. So, oh, nice. This is that piece. I brought it to the party and he sent it out so we could use it at the party and, and to hook us oh, up. Oh, I love that thing. Yeah, it's a molten. I think they say it's the GYZR perk, which it's just a few little holes, but it's it's probably my favorite piece. You don't get like crap all in the lip, you know? I, I don't know. Nice. One of the coolest things. And this is the uh, tornado. <sighs> I think it's called the tornado, like ash catcher thingy, whatever. Yeah, uh, that was the other cool part. Was just, I mean, I brought a, I brought a tube and stuff, but there was a bunch of different vapes. Jo you know, yeah, the, yeah. It, not only that, but just the like rip. smoking, smoking the way people prefer to smoke. Yeah, which can vary widely. Yeah, and local local tried glass for his first time. He had only ever smoked out of joints or blunts. And I'm like, bro, you have to try glass. And after that, he was a changed man. And then he trained, and then he tried the rip. And he was even more mind blown that, that, that weed could taste like that, you know? Yes. Well, it was funny with that old school fucking vape box. Uh, yeah, and yeah. And the crew, like that method <laughs> that we figured out with it or whatever, uh -huh. you know? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, and, and then you just, and then what's interesting about that is you smoke a joint, a blue dream, or you, or you vape blue dream, or you take a bong hit of it yeah. and you get different qualities. Sure. After. Yeah. Yeah. You know, not so not so explain explain what that box was again. Oh mm. man, so the box it's like one Tell of the it's what's in the box, not so it's what's probably in the box, it's probably <laughs> like one of the older like vape devices that came out. It's probably been around for a good 20 uh, years or longer. It's been yeah. a long time, and it's basically Something a tapping. Can you guys hear it? Oh, I'm sorry. Hold on, let me stop that. We got an interesting house here. It likes to make some noises. Hold up. He's beaten off. There it is. And uh, so it's like a wooden box that has like a glass uh, element with a ceramic on it. And you can dial it in for how hot it gets. And then it yeah. has like a a glass mouthpiece with a, a tube, for lack of a better term, that connects to another glass piece. Um, and most people would end up like filling the glass like really deep. Yeah. And then you get one or two nice hits and then it kind of tastes popcorn-y. Yes. And, Every and time. it, it kind of loses its flavor and it's hard to deal with. But what we figured out 20 years ago is if you just grind up weed and you just you just use the mouthpiece and you just suck up a little bit, How just enough. It? It's the huh? motion. It's the motion the look motion? like when you do it. Yeah. Can you do it? It's, you have to like hoover do, do you, up the weed. You, yeah. But what do you do? You know? Do you put it to your mouth? I How do. do it? You have yeah, to put okay. it to yeah. I smoke by putting things to my mouth and inhaling. I don't know okay. how other people do it, but that's my method. <laughs> okay. Uh, I inhale. We can get you to pantomime. And Let's so I, uh, and so, you know, if you, but if you just coat the, the screen with a little bit of weed, yeah, you can get two or three really nice hits and then you can blow it out in a little bit of water or a glass or something like that. And it just is really user-friendly. Yeah. That and, completely changed uh, my rip deck too now. Yeah. We, the huh. vapeware box, right? Yeah. Vapewares and Vapor Brothers made them. Vapor, had, Vapeware, Vapor Brothers, indeed. Yep, and yep, we smoked it a bunch. Good. And it kind of fell in and out of favor. And then when we figured yeah. out how to do it that way, there was like a couple of year period where like that was the method. I bet. No, Why do it no any other method. way? No. And you get really clean terps that way. You know, you get really like yeah. a really good sense of like the profile of how the weed tastes. I feel Maybe like it's a little get, bit of a different buzz. I think you get way higher. In my opinion, I, at least it's a, it's it's a noticeably different high. It's different, yeah. smoking any it's other different. way and I, it's got to be because like the volatile <clears throat> shit that would normally burn away right away you're actually experiencing what it's like to you know and then the other thing i'll say is that since everyone was so generous with samples 
I'm still smoking off samples I yep. brought home. Um, <laughs> and I got a much better sense of a lot of the weed at home. Yeah. Sure. I did at the party because when you're at the party, mm -hmm. once you've smoked 27 kinds of weed in eight hours yeah. through nine different methods, you know, you're just looking for what cuts through at that point. Yeah. It's like yep. what cuts through, but it's like, you you know, it's hard. And it's like, then it's like, I can wake up and I can do some chores and I can take a couple hits of this and go do some stuff. And I'll be like, Oh, it does that. Yeah. yeah. Just, oh, it's got that kind of effect, you know? Like, oh, it makes Absolutely. me want to sit down and do nothing. Or like Pac said with the train wreck, oh, like it makes me want to move. Yeah. Yep. Did any of you get yeah. to try the banana tie? Oh, yeah. The panda bra? Yeah. That yeah. shit yeah. makes yeah. me want to move. It makes my heart pound. I love it. I love it. It's a bit much for me. Crazy. Yeah. I smoked that shit yeah, before. And I, I think yeah. uh, <laughs> that, that's the other part of it that I, that I do like is that you know, Pac used to live up in Humboldt. And I do think that like Humboldt and Mendo and going to, I call Santa Cruz, like the very edge of the, weird, yeah. of the weird bubble, you know, <laughs> yeah. where there's this bubble that there's enough weed people doing stuff around you that there's somewhat mm -hmm. of a community, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And we, we got some friends that came out from Illinois and from Alaska and from here and from there that they're kind of like the only person like them in their little community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. sure. And so yeah. it was really, it was really nice to see, especially some of the younger guys, um, get to hang out with a bunch of people like them of all age groups. I think probably for them it was like more memorable, even for us. I'm sure. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know if memorable would be the correct term, seeing how we're all so high. You're probably not going to retain a lot yeah. of the memories. In you know, yeah. influential. I don't know. I remember, I, I remember a fishing hook almost hit me in the head a few times. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. you know, just just speaking of that bubble, not so that you brought up. I was I was telling H and L a while back. You know, one of the reasons why I didn't get on the forum back in the days because I, you know, I was in that network from, you know, or the network that I that I had around me was, you know, it was kind of compartmentalized, right? Like there was the crews down in Big Sur, and you had your Monterey Cats, Seaside Guests, and you had your people in. in you know, Santa Cruz and Humboldt. Um, but I, I never had a, a need to go outside of whatever the network was that I was working with in, in terms of trying to reach out or find out, you know, what's going on with others or, you know, growing techniques or whatnot. Not that it wasn't, wouldn't have been something that would have been helpful at that point, but because of my propensity to not want to be on the radar whatsoever and even touch a computer and say anything on there um, that had anything to do with whatever, I wasn't really compelled at least in my group to have to, you know, feel like I need some connection outside of what I'm doing on my own. You know, I wasn't really that kind of lone wolf space. Whereas you know, a lot of people, I think, and, and HDL could probably speak to this better than me, but a lot of people who weren't so connected or had to be even more um, discreet, right. No, and I no. weren't going to talk to anybody. It was like, that was a great place to be able to make those connections and, and really kind of figure out what was going on. Right. Yeah. Here it was uh, a whole different animal. I mean, you didn't, you knew two guys maybe in the area it was you know if you wanted if you wanted to be amongst people like you you had to find them online because you weren't talking yeah. to other people around you doing the same thing weren't talking and it's still uh still kind of like that here even with you know some version of legalization it's um it's still mm -hmm. pretty pretty closed lipped at least on you know the people that have been doing it a long time I agree. And I also think that because we're sort of like a, 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 a very small subset of a subculture, right? Um, mm -hmm. In a way, like we love weed for weed, you know, um, is that the either, you know, the internet is a way for lots of people that have sort of unusual interests to find each other. Right? Yeah. Um, you know, from all kinds of walks of life. It's you either know, that or bathroom stalls. We only have two choices. <laughs> Rest I mean, and, and yeah. uh, you know, so <laughs> they. Uh, That's how I got Natsu's number. In, 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 <laughs> indeed, right off the bathroom stall. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I, I, uh, I agree. I, you know, it's, it's that you know, even in Met, people think. I get it all the time where people think that Mendo or Humboldt is something that it isn't. Yeah, because they, you know, they think of it as like this weed mecca, which it kind of is, but it also 
has all these elements that like you wouldn't really get unless you lived there. Um, and no. so I, but you know, just, you know, sharing time and energy with like-minded individuals, I think is a good thing, you yeah, know? Absolutely. And I was, I like pack. I too, I was scared of the internet. Um, especially when heaven stairway and, uh, and cannabis world and, and overgirl all got yeah. shut down. Yeah. I wasn't very yeah. tech savvy. So I got worried that like everything I did and said would be permanently there that they could find. Yeah. What's it? It was What's a that? little bit, it was kind of green merchant. A yeah. Little past green merchant. It was definitely past green merchant before like 1990. And this was like probably, I don't yeah. think, I don't think those busts happened until like 03 or 04, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. Um, but I didn't like when with High and Lonesome being on IC Mag and all that, like I worked in that era. Uh, but I just basically like but you you were on someone I, else's computer. Yeah. And I was I was <laughs> in NorCal, Lake County, yeah. Mendo, you know, it was kind of a booming time for my area for cannabis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not mine. <laughs> no, not yours. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, uh, hey Matt, we didn't get yeah. you, partner. What was what's what was the standout or standouts for you, man? Oh, uh, I, fuck, I don't know. Um, of course, the Blue Dream, just because like I, it's a classic for me, and because I'm such a blueberry head, like, um, that's that uh, that's what I I pull to. Um, let's see, like the main standouts. I know everybody was stoked on the shoreline. I didn't get to try that one. I was so busy trying mm -hmm. everything else, but that's the one I remember everybody being real stoked on and hearing about. Um, yeah, I liked Caleb's flight plan. I think it's called Flight Risk or Flight Plan. I he's, I always get it wrong. That was a good one. Flight, flight Risk. Flight Risk. Flight there risk. you go. Yeah, that makes more sense <laughs> than Flight Plan. <laughs> um, and then there was he had one called um, the the Blackberry Wine Sixty Nine. It was oh, real that was, unique that and, and tasted and smelled like wine, like Chardonnay. Yeah. That was that cool. Was, yeah. um, was there was the the, the uh, Sweet 16, I want to say. Yeah. That was, that was really good. I like that, that one. That was Pinks and Perps selection, I think. Yeah, it was from the Pinks and Perps. Like some yeah. Blackberry Widow hybrid Mendo Perps type thing. Real cool. Yeah. Yeah. Kept, yeah, yeah. We kept going back to that jar, as a matter of fact. Yeah, there, there was so much stuff there that it was just ridiculous to try to go through it all there. When I got home, I, I, I didn't try the Death Star much while I was there. When I got home, I really enjoyed it, you know? Um, P91, I finally got to try when I got home, and, and that was really good. Really good grow of it. Um, God. And, and Denali Silver Pearl. I never get enough of Silver Pearl. That one yeah. was so good. And, and I've never had outdoor Silver Pearl yet. And it was still pretty good. I liked it. And it actually had a pretty pretty strong high for Silver Pearl. 21%. 21% at least. 21%. <laughs> yeah, that's what I dug. For sure. I was wondering if you had Silver Pearl. I have a bag of that Silver Pearl that was smoked on the other night, and it looked like something Denali put out. So tasty. Yeah. 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 He gets, he gets you a job. nice backyard victory garden. Yep. Yeah, you know, and so he gets to do a bunch of favorites and stuff like that. So, yeah, um, yeah. yeah, he had a, he had a, I gave him uh, my sour diesel cut. He had a pretty nice example of that. It was good. Um, you know, I didn't even get to try that. No, it took I don't. <clears throat> it's I don't a, it's, you catch it. it's a hard one outside. Like the <laughs> flavor varies a lot outdoor, but the potency is there. Yeah, mm. for sure. Oh wait, no, I take that back. He did. I did get to try that one. He sent it to me beforehand. It was good. Did it really good it's outdoors. Good I, yeah, I was like, wow, this actually is really good sour. At first, he didn't know. He's like, I don't know if this is good or not. And I was like, no, it's actually coming through in the outdoor. It has a great smell. Yeah, sour, my... sour is so variable outdoor. It is. But you know, I feel like the high normally is there. It's just the flavor and the looks. You know, yeah. for me, are mm -hmm. very very. Definitely. It takes a long time high and lonesome. So you really need a good season. Yeah. Um, in order sure. to get it to express right, because you really need that last two weeks to be banging. Yeah. And it yeah. likes to go towards Halloween ish or even early November ish at times. So you don't always get that weather. Not here. No. no. 
not even in Mendo sometimes, you know, it just depends. Yeah. yeah. It just depends. Sometimes you get real nice, warm, dry falls and other times it's rainy and cloudy and problematic. Yep. So my well, phone's about to die, Matt. Yeah, well, I'm going to, yeah, we're almost at two hours. I'll touch on the 420 sale real quick. We got a uh, sale coming up on 420. Um, we have some freebies from High and Lonesome. What, what are the freebies you're going to be throwing in? Uh, they are the Mule Skinner. So that is GMO cross to Appalachia. That's awesome. Yeah. And Goat Farm is going to be a part of it too. And, and what's going to be the freebies with your stuff? Yes, sir. What do we got? Uh, I think we're going to throw in, uh, maybe we're going to do that Afghan uh, arcade that's right. across. And then uh, I got something called Hell Melon. Hell and that's a, Hell it was Melon. a watermelon Skittles hybrid? Yeah, watermelon Skittles hybrid crossed with uh, an F3 uh, Angelico, which is one of Bodie's um, cuts. A buddy of mine had been working on that for quite some time around here, the Angelica. Awesome. And, um, got it to a nice spot. And it, yeah, it's going to be something. So we're going to have a few things from both of those gentlemen. And uh, we'll be having a big uh, uh, percentage off. And I'll be throwing in some other freebies too. We'll be letting everybody know about it. Um, shout out to Molten Glass again for this awesome glass. It really is my favorite piece. And shout out to Crybaby for for hooking it up. And uh, we wish you would have been there this year, but you weren't, buddy. We'll see you next year. Yeah, buddy. Next time. Around. And I would just like to throw in that uh, you know when Matt convinced me to start chatting in public, uh, we kind of wanted to bring like real weed talk without like so much promotion into it. Um, mm -hmm. And so uh, everybody on this chat today is my very good friend. And yeah. so anytime I get to chat with my homies, it's always a, a good time. And so I'm super glad that uh, High and Lonesome and Pac and all of us, we got to chat for the last couple That's hours. Literally. Very enjoyable. About damn time. Yeah. <laughs> God damn time. Yeah. I just, I just wanted to mention that, that, that uh, you know, everybody on this podcast today is my really good friend and I appreciate them a lot. So. Like yeah. what? What do you yeah, got? Here, what, what you got uh, any closing thoughts? That was my closing thought. <clears throat> was this? I just wanted to be <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. All right. <laughs> if you know yeah, you got one. No, I mean the positive vibes coming from not so pretty much covers it. Yeah. Um, we all do this for the love of it, and um, it's just great to see like-minded folks out there. Yes, Go sir. Farm. I agree. I agree. Um, well, you know, just stoked to be part of a good group of people, you know, and, and sharing a similar philosophy uh, that goes beyond just chasing the dollar. You know what I mean? It's it's really cool to to know that that's well and alive. And, um, you know. And you got some merch coming out it. soon, too. Yeah. Somewhere, well, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, we're always in the lab doing something around here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I would say I would say keep your eye out. Uh, you know, I don't know if if anyone does follow on Instagram or whatnot, I, I have a tendency to kind of post some things that I'll be working with maybe a couple months ahead of time. Um, and that's for me to get an idea as to what I'm doing, right? It's all part of the vetting process. But um, if you're wondering what might be coming down uh, the pipe here in the next six months to a year or, or shorter, um, you know, there's some good things in the works. Um, I'll say that shoreline is on that shoreline and that green crack is on the list. Oh um, yeah. And uh, you know, maybe maybe some blue dream work, you know, who knows? Yeah, and some collabs with you and uh, high and lonesome in the future, maybe. I hope. I think that's hey. in, the, in the books. I think it's a good idea. Yeah, yeah that might be something. Yeah. I think it's on the radar. Friend. What what was that? I said I think it's on the radar, yeah. Yep. Oh, well, you know, I'm I'm just stoked to watch my good buddies want to grow some of the shit I've been putting together. Um H Nell's, you know, gonna be popping some things or you know, things are starting to show up, so you know, I'm just thankful to to be part of it all, and it's it's uh you know you create you and Natsu create something really unique here, and I appreciate it. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, I got, I I personally um, have I grew up reading like high and lonesome stuff like on the forums, and um, ah, dude, becoming going from being like an admirer to to one of my best friends has been a huge honor. And mm -hmm. um, same with you, Pac. Learning you, learning learning who you are and who you are behind like your instagram person but you're the person behind that and and how mm -hmm. you're involved and stuff has been pretty mind-blowing it's pretty been really cool getting to introduce you to everyone and so they get to learn your story too and slowly slowly hopefully everybody else will over time so we'll see how it goes look at how nice he is to you too i know <laughs> yeah and, and then there's that 
I get, I get, uh, I get truck stop, Rest stop jokes, jokes. And, yeah, totally. and you guys get, you guys get warm, warm and kind admiration. Of <laughs> Not so he's just all that is is he's been loving you a little bit longer. That's all. Indeed. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Sexual That's frustration, right. sexual frustration, yeah, like, fellows. Y'all are an old married couple. Indeed. That's for damn sure. Pretty much. All right, but well, it, yeah, thank thanks you for, for everybody for everybody's yeah. time. Thank yeah, you for thanks. coming on. It was a pleasure. And and my phone there's... literally is at two percent. So if right. I die, it's 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 that. And then Natsu's dead. Mm -hmm. So that's that. So not so's all dead. right, mm -hmm. we'll end it now, real quick. Um, and then I'll I'll talk to you guys one second. One second. Want to sit at the table with the syndicate? Check out our Patreon in our link tree or description below. Our merch site is officially live. We have all sorts of shirts, hoodies, and goodies to sort you out, and shipping is super fast, and most importantly, the quality is top-notch. I've been saving old designs for years for this purpose, so please check it out, syndicategear.com. We also have an underground syndicate discord where we get together and solve old strain history together daily. It's an amazing community of learning away from IG, and it's an amazing resource for old catalogs and knowledge. We hope you join our union of breeders and growers. Come check it out.